I know, I know, I know we're seven minutes late. I do apologise, seven minutes late, but we're here in the end. Sorry to keep you waiting. A complimentary gear popcorn to everybody that's in the theatre. Uh, so, yeah, well, we, we, we do apologise for being late. Um, seems like Hangout has had a few hiccups this evening and it wouldn't run properly for us. So I had to fix it, let these guys sit back and I went and fixed it. So got my screwdrivers and things out, fiddled with it. Yeah. To make up for make up for the delay, Ted will have an extra little glass of gin for everybody. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. run on seven minutes like extra at the end, just to yeah. cover. <laughs> yes, good. Um, well, good. Good we'll evening. Seven minutes of Gumpler talk. There you go. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't speak that. Up. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a Monday night live stream from us at emodels emodels uh, the one stop shop for all your modelling needs. Uh, welcome and. I'll try and stay in focus, but I've got my computer back. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep, yes. Ted. You know, you know better than that. Yeah, well, I'll try. It's, it's, it's expected of me now to be out of focus. That's true. Yeah, so, if so you ever get it. a new camera, you'll have to deliberately smear some Vaseline on the lens just to get that 1940s femme fatale out of focus look. Yeah, well, I'll just smear it all over your face. That'd, be all right. That'd do the same, same effect. Also, oh, you can turn the channel. No, that's never on a Monday night. That's on Saturdays. Ah, okay. Cool. Ah, yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, or, or perhaps I'll just get a downy type coat that'll just give it a, a soft edge to everything. Uh, yeah, that will do. Yeah, then so. Why is the rum gone? Barker says he won the sweepstakes, the Gumpler sweepstakes. Oh, already? Has he it been mentioned? Within the first two minutes. But, yeah, but was that the first two minutes or the first nine minutes? Ah, ah, good point. Really? Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, right. So, yes, we're here. We're here as normal. Uh, slightly late, but we're never normal. We're, we're never normal. Uh, uh, my battery's about to go flat on my phone. Right, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's all going wrong. It's all going wrong tonight. Yes. Yeah, John Bennett says, hey, Ted's in focus. Only briefly. Yes. Yeah, uh, it cuts yeah. away to lock the screen on something. It comes back. It'll be gone. Things will change. Uh, so, uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, where are we? So, yeah. <laughs> I'll try and take your email tonight as long as I can, as long as my phone holds out. Have you might, not got your charger? I might have to dash inside and get my charger. No, don't make him play with wires. Or move or unplug anything. <laughs> yeah. I Whatever you do, don't plug it into the computer to charge it. For the love it's being off screen for a moment. I've gone for my charger cable. So get your get your questions sent to ted at emodels.co.uk. Um, they'll hopefully pop up on my phone. You can put them on in chat. Uh, remember to put them on in uh, capitals, in bold, bold capitals, and we'll hopefully spot them. But remember, the chat does whiz up faster than we can read it. We have our little man, little man, far away, man. We, we have our man, to, to Chris, to look after the chat. Hopefully, he'll uh, pick more things up than we usually do. And just generally after that, it's just the general, usually Monday night mayhem. Yeah, don't yeah. forget, as always, if you're watching on the eModels website, that's emodels.co.uk forward slash live, uh, and you want to join in the live chat, then just click on the little YouTube icon at the bottom right of the video player. That will take you to the YouTube page where this stream exists, a realm where this stream is the real thing, uh, and the chat is on there and you can join in. Uh, and if you want to make sure, super make sure that your comment is noticed by us, uh, you can click the little um, super chat button, the little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat window. That just means your question or comment will pop up in massive, big pink or blue or green or gold square. So feel free. It's completely optional, but you're more than welcome to press the Super Chat button. Yeah, yeah. so that's it. Remember, it's your stream. It's up to you. Uh, we're just here to sort of chat amongst ourselves and you guys to sort of uh, run it and give us things to talk about. We will talk about, as you know, we will talk about anything, um, specifically things that are old uh, or older, in my case, and modelling might come up again now and again. So, yeah. Yeah, again, don't make promises we're not going to keep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> might, 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 maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so, so right, uh, uh, right, I do, right, I'll try and get on to my phone and answer these questions before the phone runs out, shall I? Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll try not to, you. I'll try, I'll shut some of the apps down. You could so take a me. risk and open the email on your browser. On the, on the <laughs> yeah. No. That's before before be. you find that, Robert Blaylock says an update on the 135 Dora railway gun. He splurged and bought one on eBay. It cost a mere $840 with shipping. 
I don't know where that's shipping to or from or anything, but yeah, yeah, it was what sort of it is, but yeah, uh, it's, back, it's actually back in stock now. E models as well. Yeah. You could have uh, saved yourself Probably a lot of cash cheap. there, dude. Yeah, uh, it was Robert last week that was on about buying it from E-Models about asking them because E-Models said they'd only shipped to the UK. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe oh, was... Ah, he's not UK then, is he, Robert, I don't think? No, no, he's in America. Uh, not if he's ah, talking about right. using dollars. No, that's, in that case, yeah. No, I'm just not going on eBay then. <laughs> it is um, things to keep in mind with that kit. Um, it's massive. So you may want to, you know, sell your children or something and have a spare room. Yeah, I'd um, give the courier does, a big tip. Yeah, it's a very big kit. It's not the normal kind of model kit plastic. I can't remember what kind of plastic it is, um, but you may find that normal sort of Tamiya extra thin type glue just won't be strong enough because of the size of some of the parts, especially the barrel. So when you're making it, you might want to get yourself some uh, epoxy glue or other, not super glue, because super glue is very brittle and doesn't hold much. Might want to look into getting something like epoxy glue, something like that that's super strong uh, and works on that kind of plastic. The other thing is, unlike most plastic kits nowadays, you will need to wash it thoroughly before you start doing anything with it, like priming it, purely because the way it's made, it's a very weird kit in that it's actually got mold release agent on it. So make sure to thoroughly wash the parts. Warm water, well, only very slightly warm water, normal dish soap, washing up liquid, and just scrub all the parts very gently with a toothbrush rinse them out and let them dry naturally in the air uh before you start doing any priming or anything like that but yeah look at things like epoxy glues and not normal model making glues because they're, they're for some of the parts they just might not be strong enough because the barrel's like this big and weighs the same as a small child so it looks like a drain pipe it's amazing <laughs> i saw a picture of the barrel part and it's like that is just a piece of drain pipe it's quite cool yeah apparently he shipped it from germany to west coast us where he is so wow Oh, what's yeah. got? I wonder which way around that went. Then. Uh, I don't know, but the oh, ship's probably the ship's top. probably below the plimsoll line carrying it. Yeah. <laughs> keep us keep us updated on it, though, Robert, because it is a phenomenal kit. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think you'd need another couple of hundred quid to tip the courier as well when he turns up with that box. Yep. Uh, Adrian Davies says Gorilla Glue is very good. Yep, it's pretty good stuff. Mm -hmm. You want a glue that will give you a little bit of work time. I don't know about Gorilla Glue. I think it's got some work time. You don't want something that kind of goes and you're locked. You want something that will. Give you a little bit of wiggle time to adjust parts. For some of the little tiny parts, like you're gluing on a railing on the side of it, you can just use, uh, if I remember rightly, normal Tamiya type cement will work. Um, yeah. I, but I, th it, I can't remember for like, you might have to look online, something about the plastic. I'm not 100% sure that normal sort of polystyrene cement will work. It's not actually polystyrene. So do have a look. Have a look. Vincent, Mr. Lots of Model Making says, since you're in the States, quick setting JB Weld will do you good for the slow setting when you can clamp it overnight for it to set hard. Yep. But obviously something you can't yeah, get your parts go all hard when you clamp them overnight. Did, 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 did. I couldn't get the word bedpost in there, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, yeah. smoozing. Hey, schmoo yeah, good evening, everyone. Oh. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Dave said there's uh, some uh, there's a YouTube uh, with a rivet count and mourning about the kit, mourning about the kit that one of the train bogies is wrong on the door. But I think if you paid that much, who cares? Yeah, it's your yeah, somebody's not going to walk into your front room, which is filled mostly with this enormous Dora, which takes up half the room, and go, Oh my god, the train bogey on that is not quite. They're going to go, Wow, what the heck is that? Yeah, yeah. I think a kit of that size, if there's only one bit that's slightly wrong, then they're still doing quite well. You're going to be happy about that. Yep, so the other thing to remember, by the way, Robert, as well, um, just uh, to avoid any disappointments. <laughs> Whenever you see it online in stores and anything like that, it's always got this nice shiny like box with lots of pictures and history on the side. That was the initial run. Uh, when they re-released it a bit later on, it sometimes when you order it, it has the nice shiny outer box. Sometimes it's just a lot of brown boxes in a big brown box. So don't panic if you just get a big brown box. Some of them are like that. Sometimes they were taken out of boxes at the factory and put in big brown boxes. So that's also something to watch for with that kit. Don't panic, you've not missed out. It's just some of the later versions were just in a big brown box. There's no fancy packaging involved. Uh, yeah. Michael Jackman reigns at an important point and says, where's all the logos gone? Welcome all the logos to have gone temporarily, hopefully. But yeah, there's fun with Hangouts and yeah, Google and stuff. The so. Hangout with Nick's My Toolbox. So. Yeah, it's the, not letting the, us put them up. Right. Right. Something with Hangouts, because not only was it a bit ropey earlier on, but also now we can't put banners on the bottom. It just doesn't work. 
so we can't put our banners on the bottom of the screen so pete if you're watching we know we <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know who we are by now then you know yeah yeah i think yeah we'll have to get a stick or something and you know uh, put our uh names on it and hold it hold you know <laughs> we'll have to go all chicote style and get a tattoo on the side of our head there's just emails yeah. at the side there okay. Kuchimoya, send me my kits uh, yeah. fans will get that maybe oh, ted won't know what that means i don't know what that means yep ted won't know what that means it's just one of them things about battle star isn't it yeah yeah if people know what hukuchi moya is then then good on you you're a trekkie yeah uh, right so yeah it's time for you guys to send your questions in uh keep us going uh, yes. we, we went for a record over two hours last week didn't we i know i, and know. I didn't have to go for a week or anything afterwards it was amazing yeah so <laughs> you can tell who i am <laughs> it's a picture it's a picture and it's also my name uh, yeah and I'm the other guy that reads the messages. So. Yeah. He's a little fella. We little fella in the corner there reading the little questions. Uh, so, right. Right. Keep him talking. I'm going to go for my uh, phone cable. Charger. Just that's it. Yes. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, I won't have anything oh, to talk spiddy, about. Spiddy, spiddy Kate says a huge E would fit the cheek area nicely. Yeah. Like Just like that. You'd be like kind of like Prince, but not have it in your hair. You could have it. If you had your hair short like you, Chris, you could have it you could cut it into your hair like Prince style. How much would any models have to pay me to have an E tattooed on the side of my head? Many, <laughs> many, many monies. All many monies, monies forever. Yeah. Just keep sending the kits. <laughs> Vincent says, Welp, time for me to stuff the Trekkie back in the closet after that one. Cheers for that, Fox. <laughs> <laughs> you should never put the Trekkie back in the closet. It never fits. Yes. Uh, I shall, because Ted was a bit disorganised at the start because it all went wrong. I'll just whiz through and say hello to everybody and fill some air. Uh, we have, uh, who's in today? We've got Bobbington Watt. Oh, I say Bobbington Watt. Hello. Uh, Sergeant Bowen says, Guten Abend from Germany. Guten Abend, meine Freunde. I was going to say something else, but I can't think of the German. Uh, uh, Fester's in. Hi, gang, he says. Griff MJ's in. Halfway through build an Ottomark 1 IBG. Nice build. Black Dog Extras. Very nice. Somebody called Gross Models is in. Don't know who that is. Uh, who else have we got in today? Smoo. I did see Smoo come in. Hey, Smoo. How you doing, sir? Dave Barker. Dave Weiser and Gumbarker. Evening, chaps. Uh, Phil Kett is in. Let's have a look. Somebody called the models. They're not here anymore. They've gone away. Uh, uh, Kett, obviously, is in. Uh, oh, he's coming. Uh, 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 right. Yeah, here are I you going to plug it into Ted before you plug right. it into the computer and make us all panic? Right. If, if I plug it in and everything dims, uh, well, there's a big. <laughs> are you actually going to plug it into? Right. It's it's in. It's in. Uh, oh, I know. I, no, I don't plug it into the computer. Because it wants to upload everything off before and onto the computer. And, uh, what right. else is in? Hang on. I was just quickly going through his in. Uh, Mike Mountain in. Hi, Mike. Uh, scale model Jedi. Uh, this is the kid you're looking for. Tim's desk in London is in. Uh, Robert Blaylock, obviously, you know. Tim Bix. Hey, Tim. Uh, who else is in? Uh, John Bennett. Hey, John. And uh, Adrian David. Adrian, David, David, Adrian, Adrian, David, 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 Adrian, David. Yes. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, anyway, let me, uh, I won't get through all of you, but anybody else I've missed, Chris Smithson, welcome, hello. I shall hand back to Ted now. He's finished running around like a, yeah. he said something else, headless yeah. chicken, nearly said something yeah. else. There. Now, now my phone has come back to life, I can find the emails that people have sent in. But only if the email's on the right hand side of the screen. Only if the email's on the right hand side. Well, of only if the email's on the right hand side of the screen, because the left hand side of the screen doesn't work, and I'm out of focus. Aren't I? Yeah. Nobody ever said that we were organised or technologically competent. Or no fear efficient. of that. Yeah. So it, yeah, if anybody ever sends me, if anybody at the moment until I get this fixed, no other computer fixed, I'm getting my phone fixed. Anybody sends me an email, and it, the email lacks the letter Q. A or any numerals it's because they're all down the left hand side of the screen and the screen doesn't work yeah. <laughs> so so that so that's it so please don't ask any question uh, don't ask, you know any questions with a cue because i can't answer them. yeah yes, you might, sure you ask a question is, re is answer requires lots of numbers in the letter q just for <laughs> just for you know fun yeah, uh, yeah so yeah you may get you may get the the, the number seven spelt out in letters yes. rather than seven <laughs> yeah. so, so uh 
Uh, Dave, uh, where's the rum gun? Says, Ted, how far are you along with the LRG truck? I'm this far along. Uh, it's all um, primed, ready for the paint. I was going to do um, some painting today, and I was actually going to film it because I've got the computer back. I was going to film a little uh, review on the AK paints available from eModels. I'm going to do a little review on that. I know that there's lots of reviews about mixing them with different thinners and things like that, but I was just going to do a quick five, ten minutes, uh, how they spray, what they what they set like. But uh, I got everything ready to sort out and start the filming this morning, and the builders turned up next door. Uh, there was banging, drilling, swearing. Uh, and right here, one. Yeah, so I didn't think it was a fit appropriate time to do any filming. So that was the last two years of my life because we've had neighbours move in next door twice who basically moved in and rebuilt the whole house and then they moved out somebody else moved in and decided to rebuild the rebuilding the neighbors on the other side are constantly rebuilding anyway there's always somebody on our avenue that's doing some kind of building work so yeah it becomes really difficult when everybody's got drills and cement mixers and swearing and radio one yeah smooth says today's show is sponsored by the letter q and the number seven <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jared says, I'm only here for the new Fox's Mum segment that should debut this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's already been up to complain about where we are, why we're not started. Yeah, about five past, she comes up and says, why have you not started yet? Uh, I, but I can hear her, she's watching it downstairs, I can hear her on the iPad. Hi, Mum. Uh, uh, Spider Q said, did they get upset with me swearing and, dr uh, swearing and drilling uh, at them? Yeah, they did get a bit, well, yeah, I just kept going around and unplugging the drill uh, for a bit of quiet. Ted has the advantage, he could just wander around with his police helmet on. Yeah, yeah. And just like behind the fence and they can't see below the neck, they just see the head and the helmet. <laughs> right, <laughs> lads, keep it down. It's all right, opposite. Uh, uh, Smooth has a question. A uh, question for Ted. Who was James <laughs> Bond's gadget man? I, I, I'll text you the I'll answer. Text in a reply, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it was... You have to like, like K-Y-O-O -O instead of the letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, K-O-O, -O, Coo. Hang on, I'm getting word from the producers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being interfered yeah. with by a furry thing that's actually got a lot of dust on it. <laughs> yeah. Could have shaken it out. Yeah. Yeah. Full, of, full of spiders and everything. Hello. So, hello to spiders and things. So it's that segment. It's that segment of the show when we say hello, Fox's mum. Hello, Fox's hello. mum. Hey. She won't hear this because she'll come back come downstairs on the iPad. Yet. Downstairs again. <laughs> she'll, hear it, she'll hear it twice. She says to me today, she says, I might I might come upstairs and wave, or I might just stay downstairs and shout hello. I don't know if I can be hello. doing coming up. No, now she's shouting hello. <laughs> she's, I don't know if I can be coming up all the way up the stairs. She just shouted hello. Yeah, Sprugler Addict says Ken Dodd. Yeah, it was a bit like a tickle stick. Uh, oh, how lucky I am. Uh, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I've lost now. Yeah, no, um, it's just like tonight has just started in chaos. We'll go in chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, set the set the standard for the night, really. I yeah, think things can only get better, but I'm sure they can actually get worse as well. Yeah. So, so hopefully, so anyway, hopefully, getting back to the LDG truck. Uh, LDG truck. L yeah, that was the question like half an hour ago, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, last week's question. Tomorrow, right tomorrow, barring any builders, the kitchen floor flooding building Anderson shelters for the granddaughter, I'll get some filming done for e-models. Um, we'll soon be back on the on track with the submarine because that's well worth a due well, that's well worth uh, well due a video. Submarine. Submarine. Right. Uh, 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 right. So yeah uh, right. Well we've got to look at some questions weren't we? I know that we did have one from uh, Dave where's the rum gun barker who's with us tonight. Hi Dave. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, that one. Troughton Chard says, see more each week. Soon Fox's mum will take over. Yes. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think this jacket would be twice as big for it, to be honest. <laughs> right. It's very Dave. strange because I can hear you asking that question right now downstairs. <laughs> Dave. Uh, Dave, where's the rum gone back? It says, Ted, I'm using the Vallejo... Vallejo, 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 Vallejo. You got it right first time. Yeah. yeah. I'm shocked. Uh, and somewhat uh, disappointed. Yeah, he's using the uh, Italian model air. Is it Italian or Spanish? Vallejo, Spanish. 
Spanish. Uh, he's using that Spanish paint uh, model air, and he likes the fact that they are pre-thinned for airbrushing. Can you recommend any other paints that come in handy to spray straight for the bowl? Uh, 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 yeah, I, I know I have sprayed the MIG paints straight from the bottle. I think they are meant to be thinned, but they do spray straight from the bottle. Yeah, I've, I've sprayed them through my 0.5 Revolution unthinned. Um, but if you do need to, it's like a, literally a couple of drops for some of the metallic colours. That's about it. Yeah, that's, that's all. Uh, I think um, AK do. I think do AK do an actual spray paint? Uh, AK do some of the AK. The AK metallics are quite thin, like the the true metals, or whatever they are. Like I've got my duramillium in them, and them. That's um, that's quite thin. John I mean, Bennett that, says the the real colours spray stay out straight out the jars. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they they can do, but uh, I have from what I've seen on the internets and the tubes and things um that you, you, yeah you really uh, i think not really you should but uh, you, you can thin them and they, for that reason they last quite a bit longer so by the time you've chucked most of that into most of that you're going to get quite a lot of that that paint mission um, model paints and humble acrylics apparently people are saying um, yeah I've I've not had great success with thinning humble acrylics. Uh, I've not had much success with spraying humble acrylics without without thinning them. Um, maybe it's just my airbrush. I usually use a 0 0.2 airbrush uh, needle, uh, so that's the one I sort of stick with. Yeah, some don't, uh, keep in mind, of course, lots of lacquer paints are actually very very thin. Yeah, especially things like the uh, the Mister Metal colours, the buffables. They don't need thinning because they're super thin anyway. But obviously they're lacquers, so make sure you wear a mask. <laughs> make sure there's nobody else in the house that's going to just beat you senseless. Um, yeah. Also, Games Workshop do their Citadel Air range, which apparently you can spray without thinning. I, yeah, I would add a bit of thinner to it, but it comes yeah. in the little silly pot. So, but there's that game air. Is it game air? Uh, Vallejo game model, uh, game yeah. color air. Uh, no game. Game. No. Vallejo game color. I think it's thinned for brushing, so it's probably thin enough to airbrush without thinning. But I've not tried it yet. I'll find out when I do my little armored car. Yeah, uh, but I know that this is um, the real color acrylic, isn't it? The, the, in, um, uh, there's not a lot of smell to this. Where it sprays like, I'll let you know if I get a chance to spray some tomorrow. Uh, where it smells when it's in the air could be quite different. I know the, that neither that nor the the thinner the purpose. Yeah, has a particular smell to it. No, no uh, so more than Tony Black has a good point in the unthinned that you thin yourself works out cheaper. Yeah, yeah. yeah it does you will get you can get you can get like a seventeen mil pot of pre thin for airbrush, or you can get a seventeen mil pot of not thinned. But when you add thinner to it, you might get a twenty five mil out of that. So it actually does work out cheap. He's right. It does work out cheaper to get ones that you have to thin because you get more paint. You get the same amount in the bottle, but you get more paint out of it because you're thinning it. So. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I'd uh, I'd picked up on that myself actually. So I was going to mention myself, but yeah, it's uh, well worth it. Uh, it's just convenient, really. I think uh, certainly mm. good if you're just new to airbrushing, uh, rather than having to mess about with thinning paints and get the right consistency and things like that. Just uh, slap it in your airbrush. Slap get it in. in. Slap it right. in. Yeah. Right slap it into your airbrush. Don't have to worry about anything else, and you just concentrate on the the action of airbrushing. So, yeah, that's, you know, with it that way, a lot easier than messing about. Uh, uh, Robert Austria asks, do oh. you put all your finished models on cases? No. There, there you go. There's some, yeah. Not no. all of them, but there's some of my finished model in the case. It's the good old uh, IKEA, what's it called? Detolf cabinet. The cheapest cabinet you're going to find anywhere is the IKEA Detolf. It's not the best cabinet, but it's like 40 quid. So. I've got a load in there, and we've got a swanky cabinet downstairs that's also getting full. So, yes, because I hate dusting them. Yeah, uh, no, mine don't go in cases because it's just a little expense. There's only one model I've ever put in a case, and that was um, a model boat I built many years ago. Uh, that went to uh, the port offices down here, and that went in a proper uh, custom-built uh, case with a um oak plinth and everything with it but unfortunately i didn't have to pay for that they did so yeah. that's the other one that's 
Could Tony Price was something that I actually fully agree with. He says he lose interest in them once they're built, starting to put them in box files. As soon as I finished a model and it goes in the cabinet, I kind of never look at it again. Mm. That's if I haven't got bored of it halfway through in the first place. So the cabinet downstairs got, and this has got loads of models in that I barely give a second glance. Apart from the eagle, which I had to give back to e models, which I still miss. I miss it. I really do miss it. So that's where my theory of building is slightly different in that I'm doing all the 144 stuff. So I like to compare them next to each other once I've finished. So when I finish one, I'm, I'm doing the, the Falcon at the moment. So I've got a base of a, a Millennium Falcon primed in black. But a tank that I've done previously, and you can see them next to each other and just see how it all compares. Being the same scale, it's I th find it interesting to find out just how different things are. So I don't really keep them in cases or anything, but I like to keep them, and, you know, put them next to each other and compare them next to each other. Hmm. Michael Jackerman says all his finished models are either in glass cabinets or here or on display at Rocks and Miniature Worlds. Ooh, oh, good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good if you can go and show off your work to the world. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I've 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 got a lot of kits that won't fit in cabinets. When I eventually at some point get around to do my one five of the scale space battleship Yamato, I'm going to have to fork out and get a case made for it, and that's going to be two three foot long. It's going to be an expensive case. But yeah, that's going to have to have a glass case made for it because it's too big to go in any cabinets at three feet long. Uh, yeah. Spitty Q8 says, Chris, do you know the E-Models law states you must stop at six updates? I, I think it's probably going to be finished in six episodes, actually, let alone all of it. So uh, yeah. <laughs> There is a fist. It is shaking. <laughs> yeah, who, who won the sweepstake on that one? Who, who won the sweepstake about mentioning six updates? Yeah. Uh, uh, Shut <laughs> Yeah, Super DJ says, did I finish the U-Boat? No, the U-Boat's been on hold whilst I've been um, getting my computer repaired uh, because it's at stages where I want to show you how it's going on and getting built. So I had to put that on hold a little bit. I've been doing a bit in the background, just the boring stuff, uh, filing out free imports and things like that. So, yeah, now we've got the computer back. Uh, once I've found all my files because the, the computer – came back from the repair shop blank uh, so I've got to find all my files off the old hard drive put them on a new one and then we can get back to filming again. Uh, uh, Robert Blaylock says name one brush you can't live without yeah spider uh, cubes say, I was going to say my Windsor and Newton series sevens because they're brilliant but I would actually say my Daler and Rowley graduate indeterminate size because it's covered in paint um, it's a chisel edge brush and it's actually got paint halfway up so it's kind of rock hard halfway up and then soft at the top and it's indispensable because it is the best metallic dry brushing brush i've ever had because it's i found if, it, if you rush if your brush gets crusted up halfway along and it doesn't move at the bottom it becomes brilliant for getting real smooth metallic dry brushing so don't throw your, your chisel edge brushes away when they get gunked up at the bottom because if the top's still soft, there's a secret use for them. And it's not a secret anymore. That's my indispensable brush. Uh, Chris Henderson says toothbrush. Toothbrush. Oh, toilet brush. Uh, out there, but... What about you guys? Have you got an indispensable yeah, I, brush? I, I like the, the triple O Winter and Newton 7. Yeah. Just because it's all small stuff and it's just for doing small stuff. It's great. Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't got any Winter and Newton seven brushes because i'm just a poor pensioner who has to live on my pension from week to week uh unemployed yeah, uh, but but i do like <laughs> I, i've got some citadel brushes um, Good man. yeah uh, Ted, if you have if you have in those citadel brushes a small shade brush and it gets a hook on the end don't throw it away because this is a small shade brush it's quite big but because it's got a hook at the end, it's now perfect for painting really fine details. So I can use this big brush to paint little tiny things, but it has a massive reservoir of paint in the brush. So if any of your shade brushes get a hook on the end, don't throw them away. You can. Yeah, I, I, I have two sets of brushes. I have a, a decent set that's here in front of me that I keep for, for special painting. And I, then when they get a bit beyond use, they're going to... Uh, the used brush holder and they're used just rough for painting chipping scruffing things and yeah it'll be a long time before a brush gets thrown out i don't throw anything away mm -hmm. uh, on that note i did see a question there um 
Bow, yeah, there, there you are. H.G. Barnes, gentlemen, with chipping and painting in multiple layers, say a red primer, then yellow, then a green, how would you go about replicating that look and maybe adding a little rust in the bare metal? Ooh. Hang on, wait, hang on, ask that again. Yeah, painting and chipping. Uh, right. So you uh, primer. Chips in multiple layers, say a red primer, then yellow, then a green. So, yeah, the paint's been chipped off through the top coat through the undercoat, down to the primer, and then maybe the primer's got chipped off as well. How do you do that? And then how about, how would you go adding a little rust in the bare metal? If you do, the way I found it easiest to do, if you're just doing like one layer of paint that's chipped away to the base coat or to the metal, you can just use salt, chipping fluid, masking fluid, you can paint them on. If you want to do multiple layers, like, you know, like you've got, a vehicle that's got several different colors and you want to have chips that are all different colors the best way i found to do it is to actually do the masking fluid route and like paint your primer coat and then if you want some of that showing through mask off where you want the chips to be paint the next coat then mask off some more chips and then paint the next coat and mask off some more chips and as all the bits you've masked because you use with masking fluid it's little tiny dots you're painting with a toothpick or a very fine brush and then when you've done all the layers of paint you rub off the masking fluid and what you get is the chips of all different colors will show through if you're clever you can kind of build on it so if you say you've got an area this area like this and let's say this is the primer color you put a blob of masking fluid here you paint over it say white and then what you do is you get some more masking fluid and you go over that blob already but make a slightly bigger blob and then go over it with another color when you pull the masking fluid off you'll have two different colors but one will be inside the other so it'll look like a chip that's got bigger so you've got two different colors you'll get rings so mm -hmm. it takes a while and it's not easy to do with even with a cocktail stick but if you're going to do multiple layers if you don't want to break your brain trying to figure out different layers of chipping fluid and how not to chip this bit and chip that bit it's just easier just to do it in masking fluid because you're not worrying about pulling up paint from two layers under that you didn't want to do because you've done the mask the chipping fluid so, I, I started playing with masking fluid on the last kit i was doing for the first time how long can you leave it before you have to peel it off um as long as you want yeah yeah you it's last for days or longer or yeah, yeah I, I, I wouldn't leave it weeks because there is ammonia in that stuff and eventually it might fade the pet underneath a little bit but if it's gonna be a heavily weathered vehicle that's just adds to weathering anyway but you know you can leave it for days yeah especially in small amounts if you're doing chipping and things like that the yeah. small amount's not going to harm it <clears throat> but yeah i'll probably if i went back to the typhoon over there i'll probably still find paint uh masking fluid on it now and i did it a couple of years ago because <coughs> you'll always find it after you finished it mm. yeah but uh going back to the chipping another way you could do it is do the first two layers in your chipping uh with your chipping effects and your, your masking fluid and then you can add the next chips on by painting them on with a bit of sponge or small uh paintbrush just add and then to add the rust yeah add the rust where you think it's going to be just uh, yeah just a little bit at a time and another secret is to make small chips into big chips don't just put a big chip on build it up with small chips now the real thing will build and it'll just become and uh, look natural more natural that way i must admit now that when i was you know a few years ago and i was doing lots of star wars models i used to do a lot of masking fluid chipping I swallowed my coffee the wrong way. Apologies. I used to do a lot of masking fluid chipping because it was often you'd get like a vehicle that was say white and there'd be like a, say a blue stripe. And the way they used to chip it on the filming models was they had the blue stripe would be chipped and just show the white underneath. So you just paint the whole thing white, put the masking fluid over, paint your blue stripe on, take the masking fluid off. But with other things, what I, what I find now is when I'm building other stuff that isn't Star Wars, for some reason, that technique never seems to look right because it's not a Star Wars vehicle. So what I tend to find now is I'll more often than not actually just paint the chips on by hand by brush. I don't know why, because it takes us a million times longer than sponge chipping. That's just where I do it now. I kind of I find yeah, it more enjoyable. Yeah, it's quite soothing actually, isn't it? Just to chip, uh, yeah. paint, I drop tops of paint over again. Uh, I also find if, you do, if you're chipping over a gloss coat and you thin your paint a little bit, if it's water-based paint, thin your paint a little bit, it tends to, when you paint the blob on, it tends to angle up and go all kind of like, crispy shape around the edge because the, the, the surface tension pulls the water in so it goes from a round blob to like a kind of angular thing 
For some reason, the chat seems to be talking about food. Adrian David said he's got a mug of tea and a hot dog with onions and mustard. Mm. And then people are saying they got pizza on the way. And is it not, you know, night time? You shouldn't be no, eating this late. Yeah, well, if somebody, wants, yeah, if somebody wants to order my order me a pizza, just drop me a line. I'll give you my doorbell goes something. in the next half hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing for questions, Christoph? We've got any. Are you stuck? I, I, I have another one that I saved from, from Kenneth M. Yay. Um, oh, hi, Kenneth. How long do you have to wait for primer to dry if you're hand brushing? Uh, depends on the primer. Yeah, it depends how thick it's gone on with a dry brush. Uh, I, I find the um, the uh, UMP primer dries really quick. Yeah, but if you're hand brushing it, you're probably putting it on a bit thicker, so a bit longer. But yeah, I, I, I would say double the time, double the time for a hand brush, just generally. Uh, I mean, bear bear in mind, it's not normally recommended, but I do when I paint stuff. I'm dead lazy, so I just hair dryer everything that's water based, mm. um, and I I brush painted some stuff with UMP primer and hair dried it, and it's been ready in twenty minutes. Uh, well, look what we did with the tune tanks, uh, start to finish in four hours, and we just hair dried them off, primed yeah. it, blasted it with the hair dryer, put the next coat on. Yeah. You've got to be careful. You don't want to suddenly melt the plastic in the model, but uh, things like water based stuff, so stuff like the UMP. Don't forget, of course, because I know Kenneth's in Australia. If you're not in the UK. Uh, what we keep referring to as UMP, the Ultimate Modeling Products Ultimate Primer, is also known as Badger Style Res or um, Ammo by Mig One Shot Primer. It's all the same stuff, just different brands. It's all Badger Style Res relabeled. So if you're not in the U if you're not in the UK and you can't get UMP Primer, you can get either the Badger or the Ammo by Mig. Um, if you've used Vallejo Primer, don't. It never dries. I wouldn't use Vallejo Primer ever. So I can't tell you on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, the, uh, the guys are right. If you've brushed it on, give it twice as long just to be safe. H.G. Barnes says if you send him a cup, he'll order you a pizza. I don't think we're allowed to do things like that. It's for his e model to be crossed with <laughs> yeah, barter. Yeah, actually win for that one. <laughs> yeah, what, <laughs> yeah, what happened is the, the e models will send send you a mug because the, the mugs come from e models and then they'll have the pizza delivered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Roberto Austria says, "What was your first YouTube video? And do, uh, is it is it still up? Is it still live?" Ah, yeah, I know what mine is. Yeah, I'll let you go first, Fox. I'll tell you. Uh, my first ever YouTube video was the episode one of the Ravel Colonial Viper build for e models, because it, it was I got into doing videos on my own channel because e models said, "Hey, who wants to make videos for us to build on the Facebook?" It said, "Hey, we're looking for people to make videos for us. Who up for it?" And I'm like, I don't know why, but I thought. Yeah, I could do that. I've never filmed anything in my life before. How hard can it be? Yeah, no, we were we were expecting them to be, uh, have a requirement for loads of equipment and lo all the lighting and all the workshop. And I think we both started off with an iPhone and a torch. I still phone <laughs> on my iPhone, film on my iPhone. I actually got an iPhone 6. It's my iPhone 5S. I got an iPhone 6 for the better camera and everything. And then realized the iPhone 5S is actually a better camera. So I still film on my iPhone 5S. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now you can take everything off it and have loads more memory. Yeah. 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 What about you, Ted? What was your first ever video? Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I just thought that my first ever video was when I was in the secret job. Uh, it was Cumbria Police Marine Unit. If you Google uh, YouTube search Cumbria Police Marine Unit, that was my first ever YouTube video. Mm -hmm. uh, not what but when he was in. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing to do with modelling at all, but that was my first video post. Was that you whizzing around on the rib? Yep, that was me whizzing around, escorting ships and submarines and it's jumping out. Call it a rib, the boat, because it was like a rib, wasn't it? With the a rigid, rigid inflatable boat. Yeah, rib. So, Sergeant so, Bone says, what, what was that you said? Did you, did you say, Fox, episode one, was that you said? Episode one of the Colonial Viper. Uh, uh, why? Uh, Sergeant Bones just says, what did you say, Fox, episode one? Episode one, yeah, there were more than six. <laughs> I think it was more of a you don't think anything before episode four is actually a, a valid answer. But yeah, that's not Star Wars, that's Battlestar Galactica. You're missing the mixing <laughs> up the genre. Uh, it's only me that gets uh, sci fi mixed up. Yeah, uh, you guys are supposed to be the experts, and know your Battlestar Galacticas from your YouTubes and your Book Rogers and. Well, there you go. There's one for you, uh, Ted. Adrian David says, talking about chips, does anyone remember the TV show and what year did it come out? 
I can remember the theme tune. Da, 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 we did more of that. Wait, I was going to say, we, theme tune, we mentioned this somewhere. but Last week, I think. <sighs> what, dear, what, what, what year? Dave's going to tell me there's a spider on my camera. Like 73. It's that big one behind you. Ah, spider. Ah. <laughs> uh, my, my first YouTube video was the uh, Hawker Hurricane 144. Tiny little plane with about six bits in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did, 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 did the adverts run longer than the video? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the video was about three quarters of an hour long. It was it was all a full build and paint in one one episode. So. Yeah, that's how I milk it. Tony Black said he's found my video. Hey, somebody's watched it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the conversation was, but Keith Denny says he's tried to link to something, but chat won't let him post it. You can't post links. Post links no, in chat. Post links. He said only Ted or whoever's doing e-models. Apart from Keith, Denny's just done one without the HTTP <laughs> on the beginning. On the front. Do that? <laughs> you can't link. He probably just typed it in manually, but I don't yeah. think it's link. Yeah, if it knows it's a link, it won't let you post it. So uh, but if you don't post it as a link, it, you figured it out anyway. <sighs> um, I think that's Ted's video. It's had a thousand views. <laughs> Which <yeah>. one? <laughs> I don't know. Tony, Tony Black just says 1,105 views. I'm assuming yeah. we're still talking about Ted's. Is this yeah, Ted's boating video? Has yeah, we found all, it already? They're all my views. <laughs> There's only, yeah, they're all me viewing it. <laughs> Everybody in the office when you're still working, look, I'm on telly. Look, hey. <laughs> yeah, have you seen this? Look, I'm on telly. Now, Ken, Kenny Thame asks what the white strip behind me is. It's, it's my light. I, I, it's not turned on at the moment, but if I turn it on, oh, it's, it's my uh, DIY bench light. It's a strip with a LED sticker tape stuck on it, which I've got what a little dimmer control down here. So it just lights up. All of my bench behind me. Uh, yeah, a spider cue said I was going to say I thought it was crime scene tape. Yeah, <laughs> it would not be easy just to stick it around the inside so it's not like there in front of your face when you're trying to spray. It's not there in front of my face, you see. It's I can look over it or under it and uh, they're pretty small. And it goes, goes over here as well, over there and Yeah. It's good. It works. It's not quite what I had in mind when I designed it and built it, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> it does the job. Uh, if it does the job, it does the job. Uh Right, shall we, go, shall we go back to the questions? Oh, you've got some email, email questions? I've got some. Yes, this, yes. Was, this is from uh, Festa67's workshop. Uh, hi, Ted and Fox. Hey, Colin. Uh, he, didn't mention, he didn't mention Chris. He just said no, Ted. I don't get mentioned in the emails. Yeah. It's fine. Nobody mentions Chris. <laughs> he has a two-part serious question. I think yes. people should mail Ted for the question, but address it to Chris just to make Chris feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Ted, please read this out, but don't pay attention to any of the words, but just read them out without thinking about them. And Chris. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we were superheroes, would you wear a mask or have a cape? And what would your superpower be? Oh, mm, uh, he he himself would have a cape and be able to fly. Yeah, I'd go uh, for that. Can't you have a mask and a cape? Oh no, uh, no, 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 that's not the question. Would you have a mask or a cape? No, but you, you, want a cape. you could only have a. You only get away with not having a mask if you've got glasses that you can take off. Ha-ha! Uh -huh. Who am I? You've got no idea. <laughs> See, it's me. I'm back. Yeah, I'm how, sure. how come Superman takes his glasses off and nobody recognises him? Because that's the way it works. It's like the little masks that just cover your eyes do the same thing, but yeah. stop people from recognising you. Uh, 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 capes are too dangerous, says Tony Black. Only if you ride a motorbike. Or work, or stand near industrial machinery. You can or, have a short... You can or have a open short, flames. Yeah. A short cape just cover your shoulders. Then you look like a then you look like some kind of like Georgian highwayman. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I could pull off a cape. I could do a cape. Yeah, I don't know what my superpower would be though. I quite if like I flying. Get around, flying, flying would be quite cool. I'd get because I'd have a mask, but then I'd wear um, I'd wear the Tenth Doctor's big brown billowy coat. So it's sort like of a cape, obviously. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, well, I'd I'd have a mask, but I'd have to wear my glasses over it. <laughs> Uh, uh, my superpower would be invisibility, because you wouldn't. Who said that? <laughs> it's almost like he's not here. Hello, <laughs> the miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, thank you for that. Do, um, do you have to wear your underpants on the outside of your clothes as well? My top yeah, he wears them over his glasses. Yeah. Ah. As, yeah. As long as, as long as it's not the day you turn them inside out. Uh, Adrian David has a question for me. Hello, Chris. What's it like working with Ted and Fox? I'll, I'll tell you after when we're not live because I'm, I'm contractually obliged to say it's lovely. 
they're, they're lovely people. And please let my family go. <laughs> <laughs> I will find you and kill you. <laughs> oh, right. Another question, another qu a serious question this time from Dave, oh, really? Dave Barker. No. Um, he's building the very small Revell uh, 1 or 100 Hind. Um, it's a nice little kit, but he's run into a problem. Alongside, there are small windows that he's glued in place and is glued it all together, slapped all the paint on, and they fell out. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, what, inside the. Inside. So it's now a rattle model. Oh. Uh, um, uh, yeah, being Revell, he used lots of filler and glue. Uh, now it's impossible to take it apart to refit them. Uh, so how is tried PVA? It worked, but not to not to the best. Uh, so after spraying, uh, he wants to form new windows. How could he do that? Uh, well, Dave, I've got some around here. I've got some an old bottle of Humble Clear Fix. Can't find it. In here somewhere, an old bottle of humble clear fix. I believe that there's, um, yeah, what's that crystal clear? Is it uh, micro scale crystal clear? Crystal it's clear. a canopy glue, but it also dries like glass. Uh, I have humble clear fix. That's what you're looking for. That's I don't know one. how it's going to work in like a window in a vehicle that's on the vertical wall. Yeah, I don't know that you'd be able to make a window out of it. But... Uh, yeah, what you can do with that, um, I think when you're on about. That's what the hind being so small is that you would form what you do, you put it with a toothpick into one corner and drag it across. And the um, what's the word? Caterpillar action, surface yeah, tension, yeah. The surface tension <laughs> would hold it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The caterpillar action would, would allow a window to form, uh, just by dragging it over. It's actually uh, an old technique suggested many, many years ago by FX themselves, uh, for. For doing things like um, uh, aircraft windows and things like that, the small ones in, in passenger aircraft. So get yourself some of that uh, and try it. The other thing, of course, is just to knock out all the other windows and then claim it's uh, basically a model of a 1980s motion picture filming miniature. I was going to say, filming miniatures didn't used to have windows, so yeah. you can get away with that. Yeah, yeah in the old days, the uh, yeah. filming miniatures didn't have glass, so they didn't reflect yeah, the light. Just take the glass out and call it air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. All the or windows are really all... beat up and make them all broken. Yeah, just like break it in half, paint it rust colours, put it in a diorama, it's crashed. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> then you can get the windows up and put them back in. Oh, I could just give it to a young child and it could use it as a rattle. Yes, I, I'd never make a helicopter. They just make me scared thinking about them. Phyllis does say blue tack on a stick to hold it. I thought about that getting a piece of blue tack on a bit of like paper clip and sticking it in to pick it up and pull it back again cover it on with some clear canopy glue and but then you've got to the moment you try and pull it up to get it in the glue it'll just fall off so mm. don't know. uh yeah busting customs model says you can use micro Chris, micro crystal clear it says on the back of the bottle yeah that's how you yeah i think alan said the same thing as well i i I'm, I'm surprised i didn't know when ted said about pulling it up i didn't know that so that's news to me uh, wouldn't. Yeah. something i've learned today <laughs> Uh, Adrian David says, is there any snow where you are? There's none here in Kent. No, there's none in London either. Not yet. No, it was we've cold had, today, we've but there's no snow. Half an hour of snow that didn't go anywhere, like two weeks ago. Uh, Keith Denny says, Pete slash Gav slash John. He's missed out James and Cheryl and everybody else, but never mind. Um, he says, <laughs> a feature request for eModel's website, the ability to add out-of-stock items to our wish list. I've said it out loud. <laughs> that's, that's as much as I can do. Um, yeah, they don't show out of stock items on the website at the moment. It did show something the other week about coming soon or something, didn't it? Uh, there, the there were some have... items that had something about coming soon. Yeah, they occasionally yeah. have things for pre order uh, for out of stock items. Retailers tend to go one or two ways. They either show things out of stock, or when it's out of stock, it just doesn't appear because that looks a bit better. Um, there's nothing worse than going to a shop, to an online store, and it's full of out of stock items. It's quite. Yeah. So, uh, but I've said it out loud now. So, uh, but yeah. drop them an email. Drop them an email. Yeah, it's not very nice sometimes to to like have a pre order a shop with lots and lots of pre orders, and you hand over your cash, and you wait weeks and weeks and weeks for it to come in. So mm -hmm. they try not to do that so much, really. Yeah. Uh, they don't want you sort of uh, hope getting your hopes up and things are not there. Yeah. 
But if there is anything that you're looking for on the site and it's not there, then nine times out of ten, it is just temporarily out of stock. So uh, if it's not there, drop them an email anyway, because it'll either be something they never stopped before, so they'll probably be able to get it for you. Uh, or it'll be something there is in stock that's just gone out of stock and they'll know to get another one for you fairly quickly. Uh, a lot of times what they'll do is if something's out of stock and they never hear about it from anybody, they won't necessarily order more stock until people start saying, when are you going to get this thing in? Um, so if it's not, I'll say, a big seller, they might just wait until somebody does contact them. So not every time, but sometimes. So it's always worth dropping line saying, I can't find this on your website. Have you got it? Can you get it? Uh, right. Roberto Austria says, any advice to stay motivated? And Trout and Chard's already said, don't know, can't be bothered to think about it. <laughs> uh, Phil, Phil East says, yeah. 80s montages work well for motivation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a montage. Um, there's, there's a Mr. Motivator, isn't there? He's on the on yeah, TV in the, in the in the way, way, way back when. He was basically a thin Derek Griffiths. It was very disturbing. <laughs> uh, basically, no, if you haven't got it, you're probably not going to get it by forcing it. So go and do something else and Come back when you're motivated again. Yeah. Uh, you, or, or what I think we've, we've spoken about this before. Yeah. What you do is you get whatever model you're doing, move it to one side and get a really easy, cheap um, pocket money type model to work on and do what you want to it. Uh, yeah. And watch some videos, have some stuff playing in the background. I just take your mind off what you were doing to, uh, yeah, do something else. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like trying to get to sleep at night. If you can't get to sleep and all you can think about is not getting to sleep, you're not going to get to sleep. Um, and Ted's advice is the best. Put it to one side and work on something small and cheap that you can just be silly with. Uh, if if you can't do that, or I, wasn't, I, I what I often do is if my motivation really goes and there's nothing else I can work on, I just play on the Xbox for a bit because then I can not think about the model at all. If I switch off my brain, my model-making brain completely and go and play Fallout for a bit, or I will, you know, watch YouTube videos or whatever. I'll binge watch something just for a few hours or a couple of days just to completely switch off the model making my, my brain. Because then after a couple of days, it'll be like, ooh, I fancy going back to that. So if yeah. you think about it, and it's the same if you reach an impasse where you're doing something. I often find that I'll be at a certain point and I'll be like, right, how am I going to do this thing I need to do? And then I start overthinking it. And then I start thinking, well, if I do this, this that might happen. And if I do that this might happen and if i do that and that goes wrong then i'm screwed and then i overthink it and then my nerve goes so i just go i'm going to walk away now and play fallout for a day mm -hmm. and then come back without and sometimes if it's an impasse where you're overthinking stuff i force myself to go you know what let's just grab that paint and see what happens it sounds crazy like sometimes it'll be like what if this technique doesn't work and i could sit and analyze it but then i'll just force myself to go you know what I'll just do it and see what happens and, and just make a mess. And nine times out of 10, it works. Uh, I'd other thing to do as well is that you've obviously got this model in front of you that you're interested in because you bought it, uh, uh, is to go and do some research on it or go and have a look at some videos of how, how other people are doing it. Uh, and then you'll see it going together and you'll, and you'll see it finished and you'll have loads of information about it. And you'll think, yeah, I could do that now. I didn't know that. I didn't know about doing that. You, know, you pick up some tips and you come back to it with a fresh mind. Yeah. The other thing as well is, the other thing like linked to that is, if you're building a particular kit and you're, you're stuck or you're bored or whatever, go on YouTube and watch somebody else building it and painting it. There's nothing that gets me in the mood more. Like if I'm building something, I started flagging when I was doing the motorbike on my Space Wolf. So I went and watched a load of the Warhammer TV videos. And I was like, yeah, I need to get back into painting that now because I'm really, I'm, I'm buzzed for it again. So sometimes with anything, you'll flag. You just need something to put the passion back in. So any of those above methods. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Barker asks, Fox in Fallout 4, have you ever just contemplated just shooting Preston? Uh, yes, all the time. But I had a mod that makes him only give one quest at a time. And one of the quests he gave me, called green skins is bugged so i can't complete it so i can never get a quest from ever again <clears throat> it's the only quest i've got left i've done every other quest in the game that i can do in one playthrough and this one just won't complete because the guy won't accept the quest so i'm like i can never take the thing off the rest of the game all right yeah. phil kett says i'm about to start building the mini art t45 one that he won in the other week any tips it's his first 135 armor build all oh, right, Phil. How, what's that model like, by the way? Because uh, I think we might have a one or two, uh, another one to give away sometime. Uh, so, the T fifty four one. 
Yeah, the, the mini art one. Yes, we know the one. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it might be some more of those to give away. If it's a good kit, let's have a, uh, let us know what you think about it. Uh, any tips? Uh, well, uh, start, open the box, have a look at the instructions, and just take your time on it. If it's your first armor kit, uh, go and have a look at some videos. I've done a, a beginner's video on building armor. I've built a Challenger tank. If you want to go and have a look at that one on your models. Um, I don't think that one's got individual track links in it. No, he says uh, it's daunting. There's so many parts. Yeah, it probably has uh, individual <laughs> tracks. It might be individual <laughs> tracks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, build it in sections um, is the, sort of the best way. Uh, obviously, that's how the instructions to tell you how to do it anyway, but build it in modules uh, and have a look because there's two sides to it. There's a left and right side, both identical. So you can have a go at one side and be reassured that you get the other side right as well. Uh, that kind of kit where it's like a million parts, like armor kits, they are usually really, really nice. So it's, I don't know if it's his first ever model or it's just his first ever armor build. I think first ever armor build. Ever just... Yeah. So um, I'm guessing he knows what he's doing about building a model. Just enjoy it. If it's your first ever of a particular type, just take your time, like Ted says, and enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if he's if his individual track links, you can get burnt out with those. So if you if you start doing I, what I would do, is do the tracks first, if you can. If the instructions and the construction allows you to, it's like when you're building, say, Gumpler or something like that, or you're building something that's got a lot of repetitive things. It's often good to get the repetitive, tedious stuff out of the way first, because once you've got past that, it's all fun times. If you do all the fun stuff, and then you sit there and go, oh, I've got to do the tracks now. And that's where you start to wilt. So I get all the, I get, if you can, it depends on the kit and on the build order. But if it's possible, try and get that tedious bit done first. Because then it's all fun and games after that. You've got I've, I've not that done point. anything with individual tracks, but can't you do, you know, a chunk of it and then do another bit or something else and then come back yeah, and do, do a little bit more? Yeah, break it, break it up. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you, as long as you, you don't lose them. Yeah, the only thing I would say about that is if you're doing that kind of thing, make sure you have them in some kind of container so you know which bits are for which track and you can just pick it up and carry on if where you left off. So you're not yeah. having to think, hang on, have I done this bit or that bit or is that for this bit? So yeah. use some common sense with your filing. Yeah, you build it on a reward sort of principle. You know, you've got this boring track to do, but I'll reward myself by building the turret. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, then uh, a secret is with... Um, Armour is usually with armour, everything's built, put together, and then sprayed, um, rather than spray lots of individual parts and things like that. That's a usual secret to building armour. Uh, but have a look around, have a look on the tubes and see how other people are doing. I'm sure that kit's about somewhere on YouTube. See how, as we just said, see how somebody else has built it. Oh, there's lots of comments in the chat about uh, someone yeah. started watching someone build a the Agostini Falcon, they lost motivation. Didn't go further than five episodes. I, I was about to say I noticed all these comments. Um, I don't know. What <laughs> uh, I watched that one as well. I wonder what happened to the fella. Can't uh, believe anyone would just stop like that. Probably never I, built a kit again. I think he, he actually got killed by a Peruvian death worm or something. That's why he stopped. I, I'm confused though because they said don't go further than five episodes. I'm pretty sure I remember there being a sixth episode. Yeah, the meme has oh, gone. The, the missing final episode. <laughs> oh no, it's the secret one that everybody's seen. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember just, if it ended on a cliffhanger. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is it like an? Do you get like an alternative ending? You get two. <laughs> you get the rest of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> if you continue to build, please watch episode seven. Yes. Uh, Michael Jackman said he enjoyed making the tracks for the one sixteen Panzer IV. It was a challenge. Yeah, they, they were lovely tracks, though. Uh, plastic. Um, had to take your time to build them, but. Yeah, they were nice tracks. I mean, we, we sit here and say that, you know, tracks can be tedious to build, but some people actually find it really relaxing and therapeutic. Some people like repetitive stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of, I suppose mm -hmm. it's not really right for us to say that's the boring bit, because although, you know, I might find that a bit tedious. I mean, I get bored building two arms and two legs on a Gumpla, but it, some people actually like that. I know Tony, for example, Tony likes that bit of the track. He finds it quite relaxing and chilled out, so... Some people like that stuff. I suppose once you get into the swing of it and you can sort of turn off your brain and just carry on doing it and yeah. get some podcast or some music in the background. Yeah. Uh, right. Sorry, I'm just sorry. I'll just uh, carry on. I'll just have a look. Uh, HT Barn says he loved doing the tracks for the Meng Terminator. Yeah, some people, some people, it floats the boat, the little sort of repetitive things. So, yeah. Uh, the other thing with armor as well um, to, to enjoy is that um, armor gives you some of the best fun weathering as well. 
um, because there's a there's a kind of way to make armor look great, and that's just make it really weathered, but make it really weathered in a subtle way. So uh, there mm -hmm. can be lots of fun researching how you want to weather it, like with oil paints or enamels or chipping and things like that. So yeah. often less is more. Yes, unless it's more. Yeah. Yeah. HG Bond says you listen to us guys and do tracks. <laughs> So wow, yeah, that's, doing them now. That, that's good. Yeah, that's what we're here for. As long as we don't make you fall asleep. Yeah, you, you, know. you could you could plan your tedium building bits for a Monday night at nine o'clock when we're on. Um, yeah. If you like boring things, listen to listen to our <laughs> podcast while you're doing boring things. Wait, what are we saying here? Uh, Tony Black says masking can be fun if you're in the right mood. Yeah, I, I feel that way. Again, some of the tiny masking people swear at and have annoyed, but I quite enjoyed doing it. Yeah, I don't mind masking. I've managed to avoid... I think the last thing I ever masked that I really hated was I was making the um, AMT USS Reliant, and I tried to basically hand mask the entire Aztec panel pattern over the whole ship with little <laughs> tiny bits of masking. After about, I was only about 15 or 16 when I did it, and after about halfway through, I'm like, you know what, I'm taking it to my local model shop and they can just finish it. And they did a really bad job. It's amazing. Uh, after that, I managed to avoid that kind of shenanigans. Do you know what I like about masking? I like taking it off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You put it all on, you spend hours and hours putting it all on, and you spray it in about 10 seconds. And then you've got to wait for the paint to dry. You're watching the paint dry until you can itch to get that masking taken off. Oh, oh, yeah, you can't wait till the paint's dried. Oh, come on, dry faster. Where's the hair dryer? I've got to tell you, the most satisfying, the most satisfying masking tape removal is taking masking tape off a canopy because so much can go wrong and the, the, <laughs> the risk is so great that when you get that masking tape and you go and you pull it off and it's perfect and you're like, yes, that is the best feeling in the world. When it doesn't work, yeah, that can die in a fire. But when it does work... <laughs> I've I mean, yet to have that it being perfect feeling, but yeah. Yeah, when it does work and you pull it off and it's like, ah, oh, because at that point it's so stressful until you've taken it off because you don't know if it's gone wrong or not. So when it... Oh, it's great. I hate uh, Vincent, canopies, but... Vincent, Mr. Loth, Modern Waking says, Fox, I too find tracks relaxing. A couple of weeks ago, he spent an entire evening drilling out uh, frugal metal tank, metal tracks for a PZ4 and a Mark IV, a Tiger and a Panther. I don't know, it's been Ooh, doing I... several at once and just drilling them out and doing everything with them. I don't actually find tracks relaxing at all. I find them really, really boring. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so when I you, grew up on Tamir kits with the rubber tracks, I'm kind of spoiled. Yeah, uh, rubber tracks and a stapler. <laughs> yeah, it's done. The, the two the two kits I was looking to get from E-Models for the next E-Models build, one was the thing I'm doing, and one was this big kind of ridiculous looking earth moving armored thing, but it was like individual track links, and I was like, mm, nah. Mm. Yeah, it could have been nice. Yeah, we could have. Yeah, we could have saw see Fox yeah, do something. Yeah, some some tracks. Mm. <clears throat> Any more questions coming up, Chris? That we uh, no, I've not found anything else. Questions? They're just. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got one here. Uh, it came in last week actually for uh, Tony Tony Blackwell. Uh, hi Ted. It occurred to me uh, that an interesting question for the chat might be: How do you plan a kit? Obviously, there are instructions uh, and the steps are in there. But in reality, we all know that that doesn't follow if you are painting and weathering a kit. So we plan these kits, decide, so we plan these kits, decide what gets painted and when. But how do we do it? Well, probably just much the same as you do, Tony. Tend to build the kit up until you think, I can't do any more until it needs painting. Yeah, here's the start of step one, follow it to step two, <clears throat> flip the page over and read ahead and then try and pick out what i need to build as a little sub build to paint that before it can go on the main bit uh, it's a bit like this thing really if i bring me ldg back it's all like that at the moment but it's all built in sections so i've built that bit and i've built that bit and i've built the, the chassis as well but in the instructions it says just put it all together so it's a matter of just planning ahead like that. That's, that's how I do mine anyway. And uh, then the weathering part usually comes together when it's all finished and put together, glued together, so the, the weathering will all come down to one whole model, really. I don't know if you guys have got any different. Um, the actual planning of sub-assemblies is the most planning I actually do. I will, and even then it will be tangential. I'll kind of, 
give it a quick look and I'll go through the structures and be like, right, okay, I can make this, I can make that. I need to paint this bit first. If it's a gun player, it takes a lot of planning, so that's really tedious. If it's anything other than that, then like a Warhammer or a tank or something like that, then I can go, right, I need to make this, this, this. I have an image in my head of what I need to build and how I'm going to paint it. Uh, and then when I've got the sub-assemblies, I just kind of turn my brain off and I just make it up as I go along. I really don't plan, other than I need to do this bit before I can do a gloss coat and then do something else. And I, that's kind of instinctive for me now. So once I've got the sub-assemblies built, I don't plan anything. I just make it up. And no. sometimes that goes horribly wrong. Sometimes. Um, sometimes it leads to wonderful, happy accidents. So... Uh, I, uh, because I'm older now, when I was a younger builder, I was quite experimental. I'd experiment and I had lots of courage, but I'll just try this. I'll just try that. Now I'm older. You kind of lose your nerve a bit and you lose that playful attitude. So you get very cautious saying, well, if I do this and it doesn't work, I can't do that. And, and that frustrates me. So what I tend to do is force myself by just not planning anything after the build part, not planning it and just playing it by ear. Do this, do this. There's my base color. There's this, right. Okay. I can't do that. I'll do this other thing instead. I just kind of wing it and it keeps me interested, stops me getting bored and it helps me get a little bit more exploratory like I used to be when I was younger, but now I can't because I'm old and I can't do exciting things anymore. So I just make it up. I, I don't know what you mean by planning. I, I don't, I just follow the instructions and do it a bit at a time and hopefully it all comes together. I do initially intend what I think I'm going to do at the end, but it never works out. So I've sort of given up doing that now. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I sometimes I sometimes plan things in advance. Like for my Space Wolves thing, I planned a big diorama. Yeah, it didn't come out that way at all. It just came out, to, I just did the flyer base. It came out totally different. So. Do, do you find yourself thinking about your model and the planning stages when you're out doing the shopping? Uh, you know, it's it's always in the back of your mind. And, you know, you know, you're trying to get to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting to sleep because around my head is all these ideas going around. And then no. when I get up in the morning, I'll be like, right, I've all these brilliant ideas. And I get up at the table, I'll be like, yeah, I can't be bothered doing any of that. I'll just do a quick wash. There you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gareth Redfern says, uh, pots a question through on the super chat. Thank you very much, Gareth. Uh, Big Blue Box says, hi, Chris. What was the last thing you 3D printed? Uh, the last thing I 3D, my, my screen's all sort of frozen at the moment. So I can't, you're, you're fine on our end. So it sort of stops. But anyway, um, I can still hear okay, but I just can't see. Uh, the last thing I 3D printed was actually another baby group for my wife because she wanted one. So Yay. I seem to be having a production line of those at the moment, but that's pretty much it. Uh, if you need to go out and come back in again, Chris, you can do because we can. It's sort of restarting itself, so hopefully it's coming okay. back. But if I do disappear, that's why. You've gone a little bit choppy, but you're all right. You're working. Uh, yeah, back uh, just above uh, Gareth's question, the one for you, Fox, is what is your, what do you like about dry brushing? Is it relaxing? Uh, well, well, well. Um, I see two different types of dry brushing. I see metallics dry brushing, and I see every other kind of dry brushing. Uh, metallic dry brushing I love because you can get that real slightly tarnished look to metal. Like, for example, um, most people won't know what this is, but a lot of places in the UK you have railings like across like um, walkways and stuff. And it's just a, a piece of metal like that. And it's usually gray steel of some sort. And it's just like matte gray, but over the years kids play on them. And what you find is in places that sort of mattness gets buffed and, and polished by use. And so you get little shiny patches, but you get rough patches. And it's not like paint chipping because it's, it's the paint is the metal being polished by hands and, people spinning round and hanging off them and stuff. So you get this kind of weird patchy faded effect between shiny and not shiny. And I find dry brush and metallics actually helps give that effect. If you get it right, it can give this wonderful kind of slightly used, but not horribly battered look. And it also can give you a smoother finish than if you just sprayed the metallic on, because somehow it, it manages to align all the particles of the pigment. So it comes out smooth. I, I do it often with uh, Tamiya Chrome Silver over Gun Metal. I spray the Gun Metal on and then dry brush Chrome Silver, but not just to catch the edges, but to build it up on the flat surfaces very slowly, very slowly, a little bit of paint on the brush. And it just gives you this wonderful smooth metallic finish, I've, I find anyway, that kind of has a more realistic look and it's nice and smooth. For other paints, 
Uh, I've only just learned how to properly dry brush. Or rather, I've always been able to dry brush edge highlights and things like that. But I've only really just recently learned how to dry brush smooth fades from one color to the other. Uh, and what I used to do was I would get a big flat brush and I will go in the paint like that and get all the paint on the brush, get it off on the tissue and try dry brushing a color. And it would be a bit scritchy, scratchy and patchy and there'd be little bits. What I've learned since is don't do that. Do what Duncan does. He gets a little tiny bit of paint on the very bottom of the brush, little tiny bit like that. Then he does it on the tissue and then he'd use little circular motions like that. And it gives you this wonderfully soft and smooth dry brushing. And I've only just recently started doing that. And it's like, oh, because I couldn't. Part of the problem was I tried to, I tried for many years, tried dry brushing with Tamiya paints. I made the terrible mistake of trying to brush with Tamiya paints and it never ended well. Now I'm using other paints than Tamiya, like proper water-based paints. Um, they actually are really good to dry brush. So it is, I find it fast. I find it simple with non-metallics. It's fast. It's simple. It's a good way to get color variations if I really don't want to get the airbrush out or I can't be bothered to get the airbrush out or it's just not possible to airbrush a part of a vehicle or a model because I've already assembled, painted some of it. It's a real fast way to get color variations. And lastly, it's just a real fast way to get variation on things like landscapes and dioramas. If you've got some rocks on the ground, dry brush them. It's an easy way to pick out the edges and it's just very fast and efficient. Yeah, it's, really, lots of tiny it's a bit paints. like the paddle line washes, isn't it? It's it's a technique that makes detail pop. It makes yeah. all the raised details pop. Whereas paddle lines will make any sunken details pop. The ra the dry brush will pick out the raised details. Yeah, it's a really easy, fast. And it's, it's, it's also one of those things that for such little effort can get such great results. When I first made a, a, a fine molds Millennium Falcon, and I did more than episode six, I didn't film it. Um, <laughs> I finished it all, painted it all, put the decals on, and one of the last things I did was I gave it a wash with Tamiya smoke, thin Tamiya smoke, and it went to all the recesses and darkened it all up nice. It was brilliant, but it lo it was it was missing something, so I dry brushed over with the base color that was under the Tamiya smoke, very very lightly, and it just caught the edges ever so slightly and put some fading on the panels, and it took it from looking like a model that had been washed uh, with a slightly glossy wash and then matte varnished, it took him from looking like that. To having that proper slightly i can't explain it but a slightly it had that kind of filming miniature look slightly soft around the edges and, and flat colors in places it just gave it it just made it kick and ping so it just it doesn't have to be for highlights you can have a base color then a wash or a shade or whatever you want to call it or an inks and then the base color again just to pull it back it's a way of pulling back to get that Sort of soft fade between light and shadow. I'm not really explaining it very well. It's a really versatile system, way of doing a million different things, and it's dead easy. And I like easy things because I'm lazy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, as you said, it's relaxing. Yep. Yeah, so. relaxing, and it very rarely goes wrong. If you if you if you're careful, you don't put a ton of paint on your brush. You can very rarely go wrong. And if it does go wrong, you can dry brush another color over the top of it. So. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jackman there mentions. Uh, sorry, um, Michael Jackman mentions now. Hey, hey Ted, watching stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, however, one, one more question before we go there, I think, and it's one that's been hanging around for quite a while from Mick Heath, and I've been promising Mick that I'll read his question out because it keeps. It, I've had it there, and every time a question comes in or a comment comes in, it, it gets knocked down the list, and I forget about it. He says, uh, at the time of writing, he wrote a few weeks ago, though, e models have Starship filth in stock. If we yes. mention it in our podcast, Starship filth. One of the best um, up to long oils that you could get for your weathering needs. Um, if we mention it in stock, uh, how fast do you think it will sell out for panic buying? Uh, order it now. Yeah, order it now. Well, it's order probably it gone now. already if this was weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Well, well, well we, we didn't mention we didn't mention it weeks ago. But, yeah, yeah. But now we have mentioned it. Will it be out of stock? Yeah. Because we but there's a reason we don't put it in the uh, in the what's in store because. Yeah. Okay. So, someday we might want one. Uh, yeah, exactly. Want one because he's I've got, got a stockpile. But I've yeah. got a throw made. Didn't you know I've got a throw made out of Starship filth? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which indeed he he goes on to say that us being responsible uh, public service broadcasters should tell the people that we should just procure what they need and leave some for everybody else. Be responsible purchasers. 
But otherwise, just slap it in your basket and get it bought. Yeah, to yes. buy all of them. <laughs> buy all of them. Yeah, yes. that's what I do. And buy a whole drawer full that, yeah. Dear, dear Pete, mate, can I have all of your Starship films? Dear Pete, mate, now then, now then. <laughs> ah, now then. Ah. Let's not go to that. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, and Dave, the way, Dave where the, uh, where's the rug gone back? I said, it's the first Monday of the month. Yes, we are going to do the gallery as well. The gallery. Yes, winning. we have the gallery I've giveaway. Got, I've got yeah, to mention that. I've got to find the picture because I had them all up before and then everything crashed and I haven't got yes. them anymore. So oh, to... Adrian David says, Ted, how's the house hunting going? Uh, the house hunting is going on. We have put an offer on a house. Uh, however, we haven't sold our own, so we can't proceed on that until we get somebody buying ours. <sighs> it's stressful. You're in the chain, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 Is it yeah. a chain or a ladder? Chain. Yeah. Chain. You never watched the 1980s, was it 70s or 80s film called no. The Chain? Was it a TV? I can't remember. Was it? I never saw that one. It was depressing. It's probably 1980s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there, will, there is progress. We've just got to wait for somebody to come along and say, oh, we like your house. But the, the kitchen flooded yesterday, so we've had to take all the floor up and everything else. So. By we, you mean you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got the blame for flooding the kitchen. But... Is that because you flooded the kitchen, Ted? Uh, no, I just moved the dishwasher. Ah, there you go. Something to do with plumbing and you moved it. Uh, you, you touched the thing, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it was my fault, yeah. Ted, we, I, we, we've known you for like a handful of years and we know not to let you press buttons or touch things. How long has Mrs. Ted known you and that she still gets you to move the dishwasher? Uh, Whose fault uh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, if right. I... Phil East has a question a little while ago. Uh, my new compressor regulator needle will not go to zero. It's set to about 10 PSI when empty. And not in use. Is it a faulty one, or is it a simple adjustment needed? I think we might need more information than that because it depends uh, on the compressor. Yeah, really, is it, actually, is it actually empty? Is it tank? Is it actually empty? Um, have you sort of released? Uh, take the plug out of the bottom of it. There's a screwing plug in the bottom of a drain plug. Uh, take them out, which you should take out every now and again, once a month, something like that, to let any residual water that's hanging around in there let it out. Otherwise, it'll uh, start rusting everything. Um, but these. Uh, compressor valves, I don't think they're the most accurate of uh, pieces of equipment. Have you tried tapping it? Yeah, tapping it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, mine's weird because mine will be like, you turn it on, it stays at zero, and it, the, the regulator pressure thing only says what you're going to put through the brush. So I'll put it up to like 20 PSI, and it'll stay there. Although sometimes I'll be like, right, I always start at zero, put up 20 PSI whenever I need, and I'll go Psh, on the airbrush, and it'll go down to zero. I'm like, wait, no. Excuse me. Hello. Put it back again. And then it'll just stay there. So mine's really weird. He, he says it's the tank kind of is definitely empty. So no. it might just be that the needle's yeah. in the wrong place. Does it go up to 20 when you put it to 10 or does it just stay well, 10 out? It shouldn't be dependent on what air is in the tank because the, 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 the pressure regulator needle should be what pressure air is going through the hose to the airbrush, not what pressure is. Yeah, so I can, I can empty my tank out, but I can still set the, the regular. Well, I can't. No, I can't actually. It doesn't tell you what pressure air is in the tank. Oh no! I still hang on. No, he's right. Yes, it shouldn't show anything if there's nothing in the tank. I think yeah. I'm confused yeah. myself now. Yeah, because it's the air. It's uh, it's the air at the side of the valve, isn't it? That's pushing the needle up to show you the pressure. Yes. I'd, yeah. I'd be tempted to say it's a duff valve, a duff uh, gauge. Yeah. Oh, but I'd be more tempted to say you might just need. It to moves get it. when he feels it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, mean, I would. If it's yeah. ten out, then just remember it's ten out and work from that. Yeah. yeah. So if it tells you to spray at 20 PSI, spray at 30. So you've got the 10 plus 20. Yeah. I'm scared of my compressor. Because <laughs> when I work, I sit here and my compressor's under the desk here. And it's like, it gets really hot. And I'm like, yeah, it's going to explode and kill me. I don't That'll know. Why I just don't... If it won't kill you, it's fine. It might do. It's an exploding tank. Oh, really... It won't kill you. It just blow your legs off. But it won't yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, nobody ever died from that. Yeah. So I don't know. It just makes me nervous. I might need to get a new compressor because yeah. well, just, just, just build a little wall next to it in front of your legs. <laughs> just keep the just keep the super glue handy for gluing up the the, the injuries <laughs> when it blows your legs off. There's yeah. just something about a, a tank, about a motor that gets really hot that could explode in time, and a high pressure tank of sheer shrapnel all combined into a tank under pressure. And also, it's probably Chinese made that it could at any point explode and rip. And I, I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah, Phil is a bit worried about his tank as well, apparently. So. Well, I just think you, you'd never know about it. Uh, just somebody else would have to clear up the mess. Yeah. yeah. Have you left us your kits? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes, I, might, uh, I might have to get myself a new compressor at some point. Yeah. Have you got any non sci fi kits? I, I could have. Uh, yes. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I might, I might get one of them ones that doesn't have a tank, but is just like on demand, but really quiet. So they go <laughs> when you spray. Because I found that this one I've got here, if I'm using my Neo, it refills every say thirty seconds. The tank, it's not the quietest, but it's quiet. If I use my Revolution, which is a 0.5 airbrush, it's constantly refilling the tank all the time. It's like, yeah, that's getting really, 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 really hot. I had to paint some of the day, and it was like a forty-five minute painting session. I'm like, oh, it's going to explode. I'm going to die. It's going to explode. The engine's going to blow up. It's going to seize. I'm going to get smoke. Or oh. I'm, I'm, I'm very scared. I'm very nervous of things that make noise and move and get hot. Uh, Philly says, my local hobby shop owner told me about a guy who blew his shed up by turning on an exposed light fitting after airbrushing. I think Hooray! that's probably an extraction that. error. Yeah, it must have been spraying some pretty... Yeah, it depends what you're spraying. Yeah, yeah lacquers or something or alcohol. That's why if you make your own spray booth, make sure you use an enclosed fan, not a normal fan with wires sticking out. Because if you pop any solvent-based paint through that and there's a spark, boom. Uh, Dave Barker says, Fox, treat it like you're in the TV show Danger UXB and just put some sandbags around it. What, and then Donna a, 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 a dashing moustache and say, I say, chaps, we've got to dislodge this one now. Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember that Danger UXB? Yeah, hello, stand back. Stand back out here. Here's the bomb squad. Get down there, guys, and defuse that bomb. Yes, I say, let's go for tiffin while these chaps try and undo this bomb. Hey, what? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, there you are. I've done it, sir. Got this muddy... Uh, a detonator. Yeah, I've got this rather muddy detonator. Uh, yeah, if you're going to explode, Jeeves, can you just explode quietly, please? Thank you very much. Uh, Don't die quietly in the corner. Uh, does... uh, right, we have a, a question that's probably a very quick one. Uh, Robert Austria says, have you been invited to any event to give a demonstration or talk? No. Nope. Uh, I was invited to something. I'm not going to mention what it was. I was invited to something, but it never happened. Is well, this model related or is it? Uh, no, it, yes, it was, a, <laughs> it was a model related thing. I won't mention what it was, but uh, I was invited to something. I think uh, there was a conflict of schedules and I couldn't do it anyway. Uh, um, and then apparently when it did happen, it was a bit of a train wreck anyway. So it was a good job that did go. Uh, I, uh, I did a couple of talks. I've done one to the... Uh, recent, not recently. A couple of years ago, I did one to the uh, Air Cadets. I spoke to the Air Cadets about model making because the Air Cadets do... Um, a model building competition uh, for the squadrons, as they call them. Uh, they're, they're doing a, an inter-squadron model building competition. So they it's a squaddle. Into squaddle. Into squaddle model making exhibition. Yeah. yeah, I've had I've had a chat with my local Warhammer store to, to uh, maybe potentially at some point in the future do like little sort of beginners painting courses type things, but don't know if that'll ever happen. Uh. <clears throat> Uh, Kenneth asks, why, why do English people do bad English accents? I think that's pointed at you, Fox. I don't do bad accents. I do fantastic accents. Oh, I say. I say. It's because, you know, why are those guys in UXB as well always the smartest, dressed, tidiest people, uh, soldiers you've ever met? That's because the officers. Oh. Yeah, the officers are always super tidy. Uh, they don't do anything. Yeah, it's not the officers that are down in the hall digging. They, yeah, it's the, the, it's the, uh, you know, the grunts. Uh, anyway, should we do some giveaways and prizes? And yeah, should we and go stuff? and have a look at what's in store first? Yes. Uh, uh, just we'll very quickly, Spiddy Kate says, was it a Star Wars convention? No. It was related to model making, and it was something that went ahead but and wasn't very good, apparently. But we'll leave it at that. Right. Uh, right. I, hang on a minute. I'm just setting up for the e-models um, what's in right. store. Make the most of looking at Fox in focus, because uh, okay. okay. it won't be soon. <laughs> what do you want to do, Ted? Do you want to do what do you want to do? Do you want to do the one of the prizes first, and then the store, and then another prize, or do you want to do the store first? Uh, or... Yeah, we could do a. Uh, uh, should we do a sticker giveaway? Uh, have you got any questions? Well, I was going to say, do you want to do like the gallery or last week's? Last oh week? right, yeah, 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 I'll have to do the gallery in a minute because I can't find a picture. Hooray! Yeah, um... uh, the link's in the Facebook chat if you remember. I know. <laughs> Sorry, my phone's died. Oh happened. God. I thought it was on charge. Yeah. Yeah, it was on charge, but I haven't turned the, I turned Didn't turn the plug on. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, there's no hope. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get the staff. Uh, tell you what, let's do a what's in store. All right. 
while the question while my phone restarts have you plugged it in this time and the questions come in yeah right i shall now put this phone on charge i'll lock it on me and i've got a screen share i can't lock it on you ted uh, I know I said I've locked it on me. Oh, right. I thought it was yeah, and now I'm going to press the screen share button. If you do it uh, yourself this time. If I can hide that. Uh, what we're going to do this week, you may remember the last week that Fox said he's got a new build for E-Models. And that he, what he was going to do with it was turn it from um, an armoured personnel carrier or whatever it was. A, a L D M L D G. I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah, a A M L. Yeah. Sort of the tank, on, tank gun it, on top. Yeah. It was going to turn that into some sci-fi thing, whatever sci-fi things are. I don't know. So I was going to turn an, a Panard A M L ninety into a Warhammer type vehicle with space marine right. dudes. Yeah, that's that, that's what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Oh, excuse me. What I thought I would do this week, I would have a look through the what's in store and have a look at models that you could probably do similar to if they didn't already look like that. Are you with me? So Ted, Ted's going to look. Ted, we sent Ted on a mission with his limited knowledge, as in none, of sci-fi, to look for things that you could a real world thing that you could convert into some kind of either sci-fi or post-apocalyptic or warhammery type. You could sci-fi it up, basically. I'm expecting a tank with two great nacelles on the sides of them to look like yeah, the end. Yeah, that would count. That would count. Yeah. So, so we set Ted with his deep and con concise sci-fi knowledge, as in none, um, yeah. to see what he thought would be a good sci-fi bodge job. Yeah, we have so, got, and we haven't seen what he's chosen yet. So, so this is. Yeah, this so is if you are well. good at scratch building or kit bashing or anything like that, you could sci-fi these up to your heart's content. Yeah. Uh, and if you do, let me see it, because I want to know it worked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've got a screen share. Have you locked on you? I've locked. No, I haven't. Hang on. No, right. You said you already did that. Uh, I did. Well, I didn't the cat out. Yeah. Stop, the cat stop out the talking to me. Have you plugged your phone in? in? I've plugged my phone in. You're still not locked on you. Right. It's locked on me. Okay. Right. I've got a screen share. I've got a share. Uh, and then we're going to go all the way. And then we've got this. Infinity. Person. Oh. I need to make right. my screen bigger now. So apologies, I can't see the chat now while I'm doing this. Going to make it bigger so I can see yeah, what it does. I can't see the chat either. So yeah, if you are chatting, I can't see the chat. Right. Oh, uh, right. So this is one that I thought already looked a bit sci-fi-ish. Yeah, uh, you could warhammer that. You could warhammer the pants yeah. out of that. It's yeah. got Terminator written on it, so it must be. Yeah. I'm sure it's not locked on you, Ted. Is it locked on me? me? I don't Chris think we can there. tell. Every time Chris speaks, I see Chris. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, well, you will, you will do, but uh, I think the chat yeah. won't see me either. Okay, that's all right. Just check yeah. it. Yeah, the chat doesn't want to see me. Yeah, yeah. So, this is the Tiger models, it's a 135th scale uh, Russian uh, BMPT. Uh, I did know you, I did used to know what that stood for, but I can't remember now. Big noisy people tank. Uh, uh, the chat is saying it's definitely locked on Ted, so we're okay, we're good to that's talk. All right. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually called a Terminator 2. There you go. Yes. Terminator 2. I never noticed that on the box. Best Terminator film. So, yeah. So, Terminator 2. Yeah. So, you could Warhammer that up and paint it black and post up click up, up, after the bomb. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, do, it does bear a resemblance to so much for Warhammer tanks. So, that, that has got a lot of either Warhammer or sci fi potential. So, we'll give you points on that one, Ted. It was a good yeah. choice, that one. Right, I was just we... wondering why my mouse pointer was moving, but it's not mine, is it? Uh, Don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, the number of times I've tried to go to the menu and be like, "Oh no, wait, it's not my screen." Yeah, uh, uh, it, yeah. It's also bad when it when the arrow is actually going the way that you're moving the mouse. So yes. think, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, right, the next one. Uh, this is a little bit like the one you've got, Fox. Uh, uh, the Rucat. Yeah, that could be. That could be. Um, that could be. See the one I'm doing. This won't mean anything to you, Ted, but for those who know, the one I'm doing, I was going to put some Space Marines with it. However, now I'm thinking it might work better with some um, um, Astra Militarum or even some Death Corps of Krieg, maybe, might work better with the one. So this this would work well with the Astra Militarum if you're Warhammering it. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah, any any kind of this is just like mint. Yeah, but, uh, Did you say Krieg? Eh? Did you say Krieg? Death Corps of Krieg. Ah, uh, no, not, not Cree. I was thinking Stargate. No, Cree. What does it mean? It just doesn't know Cree. Nobody knows what it means. 
Oh, uh, I well, yeah. Well, this one uh, is the, the it's a trumpeter, so it's uh, uh, won't be too bad a kit in uh, in that box. A uh, load of stuff there for it. I you know what the wheels on that made me think of? They remind me of all the vehicles in in. All I've got in my head is now all the vehicles in Thunderbirds or Captain Scarlet. Then you see him going along the road, and the wheels are bouncing up and down with the little bits of suspension. Mm. Uh, this already looks like it's been two vehicles sort of shunted together into one. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a bit of cut and chop. Uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a re, uh, rebuilt this one in a chop shop. So yeah, you could cut the barrel off that, make it a stubby barrel, stick the barrel yeah. on top there somewhere with another turret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that that's that, that's got a very good Jerry Anderson look to it. That one, I quite like that. Good choice, Ted. Another good choice yeah, from you there. Yeah, yeah. Am I doing okay so far? Mm, doing all right so far. All right. Uh, now this one, a uh, little bit in there. I was looking at the gun on this, uh, that sort of thing, and the sort of the low profile of it. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, if you took that barrel off and put a big fat stubby round thing on it, like half a piece of drain pipe, then you'd have a proper Warhammer look to that, like a volcano cannon or something. That'd be great. Uh, I wonder what that was at the back, but it's a, it's a boat in the background, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's your boat, Chris. No, it's a special, it's a special <laughs> anti-satellite Jerry Anderson style laser dish beam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that could be a recon for your Space Marines or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I wonder if you. If you were into war gaming, uh, Warhammer and things like that, would could you turn up at your gaming table with one of these type? Yes. It, yeah. If it's an official Games Workshop tournament, no, it has to be a model created by Games Workshop. You can't even turn up with a load of Space Marines with, say, resin parts from, from third parties on the back. So if it's an official tournament, you can't. However, if it's just you and your mates playing or in your local club, as long as they're happy with for you to do that, you can. You have to. There's a lot of people. There's a there's a group called the Death Court of Krieg, and they're like little little. They're kind of like they look like World War Two Germans, but with gas masks. But they have a lot of vehicles that look like World War Two German tanks. Uh, and what a lot of people do is they get little Panzer fours because they're about the right size, and they make them up into Death Corps of Krieg. They have to take the place of an existing vehicle in the Warhammer universe, and you have to put warhammer type weapons on them so you can say that bolter or that flamer or something so you can but if it's if it's the vehicle is a, a normal model kit then it's actually fine as long as everybody on the table agrees there's nothing really wrong with it you don't have to have the specific model you can use like in this case panzer four with a bolter and a volcano cannon and some other in-universe weapons stuck on it as long as it has the right weapons in the right place you can do I it and I, people suppose, do. Uh, I suppose also for the guys that are not into games workshop like me you could you, you could do some of this this work on these vehicles as and build it as if a, a what if yeah. you know what what if the russians had captured that um terminator that we saw first mm. and they then put another type of gun on it or yeah. painted it in a different color nothing to stop you doing that at all yeah. uh, and you could make some quite interesting kits so kit tony black says it would have to have hit points assigned to it what a lot of people do tony is they just say this is the thing I've built, but it's got the weapons in the same place as a N existing Warhammer universe vehicle. So just assume it's that vehicle. They just make it with a different kit because they didn't want to buy the Forge World tank that cost them 200 quid. Um, so in a lot of cases, it's, it's an alternative to buying the expensive Forge World, Forge World resin one. But as long as the weapons are in the right place and correspond to the actual codex where the weapons can go, apparently it's fine. But not in an official tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that, they're, they're, yeah, these are all really, really good. Uh, this? Uh, uh, this is the 28 centimeter storm morser storm morser now I, I picked this one because of the scale of the guys that stood next to the vehicle itself which indicates it's quite a small vehicle yeah um it's like uh, a wheel basically with a couple of wheels yeah so a bit of extra plating on there or uh, maybe a couple of guns on the top maybe off something else uh, yeah because i mean this one and the last one i've got no, not just a Warhammer thing, but they've got they've got that kind of post-apocalyptic potential, the kind of Mad Max hmm. post-apocalyptia type potential as well, which is good. Yeah, so that's that one. Uh, right for having things stuck all over it, that one. Right. Uh, uh, now where are we up to? Uh, right, another one here. I keep getting that menu. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. quite... This is the Tiger model. The, the car with the tank stuck on top. I actually quite like that model. Why didn't I see any of these when I was looking for a kit? <laughs> I, actually, I actually quite like this model for the model itself. This is a French yeah, it army. Looks, 
No, it's, it's, kind of, it's like somebody. It's like the love child of a 1970s American muscle car and a tank. Mm. The yeah. back bit looks like some kind of like American it's, Mopar. It's something you'd think the A team would knock up in a garage in half an hour, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, when they're when they're stuck in a sticky situation, they have to get out of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, Quite what you want to do is you want to get that, and you want to get the uh, the Warhammer extra parts for the Bane Blade kit that has a big um, excavator plow piece that you can glue on the front. That'd be great. Yeah, so, that's I like that. I might have to get that. Yeah, it's really quite a nice kit that itself. Yes. Uh, once again, one thirty-five or uh, forty-seven quid. Uh, French Army nineteen eighty to present tank destroyer. Mm, tank destroyer. Tank destroyer. Oh. Uh, oh, that one. Unless it drives over some pretty <laughs> place like tacks and nails, in which case it's oh. not very mobile. Yeah. That one's very Thunderbirds. Yeah, yeah that, we, showed, we showed this one quite a while ago. But yeah, we showed this one quite, yeah, quite a while back. Um, I'm not sure if it was an actual production thing. I think I've seen. Fo <laughs> I'm sure I've seen photographs of the real thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whether or not it went actually into service, I've no idea. Uh, so was it World War One. World War One. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this has got this has got like an aliens vibe to it. This is just yeah, like yeah. it's got big massive wheels. Yeah, uh, I think if you painted that something in black and silver and sort of gold and yeah, yeah. is that the scale of a man standing next to the wheel and yeah, still sort of walking underneath that's, it? That's the guy there. It's huge. You could put a Gundam on the back of that and make it like a Gundam delivery system. Uh, there you go, bit of sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. That's all right. Um, I'll take you back now to the guys while I go and have a look for the uh winner of the gallery giveaway. Yes, and I'll look up the prizes as well. So, I'll yes, stop I'll stop I shall explain for those who don't know what the gallery giveaway is. If you've not seen this before, uh, on the emodels website, if you go to emodels.co.uk forward slash gallery, or there's an option in the menu at the top that says gallery, that's a gallery for you to upload pictures of your finished bills. Uh, and you can rate people's bills. And what we do once a month uh, is at the start of the month, the three of us will go in and we'll pick a handful of builds, photographs that have got five star ratings that you guys are rated five stars. And we'll have a bit of debate, debate back and forth and a bit of a barney and argument. We'll throw some cutlery around, some pottery and stuff. Uh, and we will pick one uh, to be a winner. Now, it's not based on this is the most amazing model with the best technical paint skills and build ever. It's not based on that. It's just based on that's awesome. I like it. It tickles me. I find it amusing. I think it's brilliant. It really works. It's beautiful. We're not looking at the most technically brilliant work. You know that some of the pictures up there, some of the builds are from younger builders who are just starting out. So we don't go off. That's the most proficiently technical paint job. We don't look for professional. We look for interesting. So you'll see a wide selection of things that will come up with over the following months. Uh, sometimes they'll look like it's been built by a professional. Sometimes it look like it's been built by a younger builder. Sometimes it'll be somewhere in between. It's just something that we look at and go, I like that. That's the entire criteria. And it's got to be rated, rated five stars. So uh, if you want to take part, at the end of at the start of each month, we will give a prize away to the one we like the most. Uh, all you need to do is upload a picture of your build uh, and then spend a little time rating other people's builds and karma will pay you back the more people's pictures you rate the more they'll come and rate yours uh, it's a little bit clunky the rating system but stick with it it's worth it because at some point in the future we are considering also doing some little prizes for our favorite rating we'll do our, our uh, favorite five star rating as well maybe we're thinking about that so it's worth getting your ratings in there reviews i should say not ratings um but yeah so anyway have you done ted have you found it yeah keep going i i, I, oh. I, I, I found the uh, I, I found the uh the winner and i'm just looking for the prize that we uh, oh, okay the, the uh, chat's had a few win. comments on your uh your choices of the the builds and basically it's it's all good people are saying it's interesting and nice choices there so i think this is a thing we're gonna have to give ted a mission each week week to uh, yeah when you, say, when you say uh, i picked them for, with a, a military uh armor eye as well thinking yeah that looks nice and, uh, I no i was actually quite impressed you did well there ted yeah. given your, yeah. your encyclopedic knowledge of the sci-fi tropes uh, oh, star, star not encyclopedic at all <laughs> 
Um, right. So yes, anyway, so uh, we'll, we will do prize giveaways and today is the giveaway from all the entries. Now, the important thing to remember is it's not just ones that have been uploaded in the last month. Some of these could have been uploaded when it first started last autumn. We won't look at when it was uploaded. So if you upload one today and it doesn't get picked straight away, don't panic. You could be picked as a winner six months down the line. So keep going, keep your bills going. One picture per build. Uh, I, you can post work in progress pictures if you want, but try and keep it to finished builds because we won't do any work in progress pictures. The Trout and Charles made it back home after surviving the bus of doom. So he's yeah, back he's still here. He knew he'd be here for hours. Yeah, yeah. we're still here. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, should I screen share again? Yes. Uh, right. Uh, first of all, I'll show you the prize. Uh, right. I've got to find myself. There's me. <clears throat> Lock it on me. Lock it down, number two. Uh, right. We'll do a screen share. Uh, share that. And hopefully you can now see uh, the board. Uh, one seventy second scale. A nice little... Something a little bit different, a little bit of nice. from Edward. I think they've named it wrong. It doesn't look like a boat. That's boat. The, the boat. The boat. Yep. Uh, and as I say, it's from Edward. Edward. Uh, Edward. You pronounced them all correctly, Ted. You're disappointed. Yeah, I, yeah. Did. Yeah. I still see it. Edward. 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 Yeah. So, um, yep. There's the boat. There's a lot of kits. And the, looks like a nice glossy instruction sheet. And mm -hmm. Bit of information on it. Yep, nice bits of decals. Yeah, uh, as with uh, Edward Kit, uh, some nice decals and uh, fittings and things like that. Yeah, it will be a nice. It will be a nice quality kit coming from the Edward. Nice kit. So that's that one. Right, I've got a client. There's clients. probably also Edward third-party photo etch you could probably get for this as well. I don't know for sure, but you probably can. Probably can. Yeah. Uh, right. So the the winner is um, I don't think we've actually had a chance to find the name because everything crashed. Uh, oh, so I go and have a look now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, is this one? It's um, I US... shall have a look now, Ted. Give me the give me the title. I shall find him now. It's USS Arkab. A R K A B. <laughs> if it's uh, yours and you're in chat, claim it. <laughs> US, hang on, wait a minute. USS what what what? Uh, uh, Arkab, A R K A B. Okay, let me pronounce that twice. Pronounce that the same twice. Uh, it looks like a, yeah, a little Liberty ship. Um, a Liberty ship. Uh, it's one three five one three fifty scale from Trumpeter. Um, uh, hang on, I've got to find it. Just say Liberty ship again, Ted. Yeah, no, yeah, Liberty ship. It's Just USS like Liberty ship. Liberty ship. Okay. USS Arkab. A R R. Uh, the winner is. Uh, the winner is. Uh, the winner is Rafael Handerek. All right. Uh, so wherever you are in the universe, Rafael Handerek, you are the winner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I seem to recall that these Liberty ships were churned out uh, one every hundred days. They could build a Liberty ship every hundred days. Yeah, I think they did some ridiculously fast build rate for them, didn't they? Uh, yeah. I like this. I, I mean, you know, we talked about this, and the, the, I think the thing that that I liked about this is the thing that kind of caught Chris's eye, which was the the water effects. I know yeah. Chris, you have a bit of a thing for water effects, At right now. Don't I don't have. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then also, it's got a, a, an anti dazzle pattern along the side as well, and continues up onto the forecastle and such like that. So, you say forecastle, you say forecastle, using all the proper terms there. He's using time. words that I don't know what they mean. The bit on the side, <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, nice, simple, easy, uh, well, not easy, certainly not easy. Uh, a nice, simple build, uh, a little touch of weathering uh, around to give the impression. Um, uh, it's uh, oh, a nice bit of rigging on it as well. The rigging's yeah, very well done. I do like that. Quite a lot of that as well. Yeah. Um, it just... <laughs> I don't know if he's used the easy line. It looks like he might have used the easy line, possibly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just caught our eye that it looks like, you know, it's giving the the, the, the waves and such gives it movement. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, so and I'm always a sucker for water effects, are one of the hardest things to do, but. Yeah. Um, he's yeah, done really well there. I yeah, quite like really that. Off, yeah. Hey, so, Ted, does Fox, does Fox mean forecastle? Forecastle. Yeah. Is it a, I've got something right. I got a naval term right. <laughs> Rah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's about it. Certainly, um, yeah, a supply ship, Liberty ship from um, the USS. The USS. Yeah, Adrian David says you can tell he's skipper Ted. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so yes, Rafael Handerek. Handerek. Yep. Um, yeah. Drop an email to if you're watching this. Drop an email to Ted at emodels.co.uk. 
uh, give us your name, your address. We'll need a contact number. Sometimes we have to have that include that in the postage details. Uh, and also put down what you've worn in the email so the guys know which kit to put in the box. Um, it was the boat. Yeah, the boat, the airplane. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, uh, yeah, so do much. drop them an email, tedityourmodels.co.uk, with your name, address, details, and your phone number, which might be important depending if we send it by courier. So, uh, well done. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Just just it, yeah. Have you unlocked it off you, Ted? Yeah, I've unlocked it. Oh, no, I haven't. It's still locked on me. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> did you have to check? Have you lost that door? Did you turn yeah. the cat off? Did you put yeah. the gas on? As Michael Jackman, I've just come back to the chat. Michael Jackman mentioned there. He says, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, a U boat target. Yeah, there's only two types of boats there's submarines and there's targets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, that's it. Uh, the will be land. Ted is still in focus, says Dave Barker. Oh, am I in focus? Wow. The, well, you're a little bit. Uh, HG Barnes says forecastle is that like Newcastle? <laughs> it's like Newcastle, but just a bit further north. It came before Newcastle. Uh, uh, it's like boats waiting for boats. Yeah, Borson. Yeah, Borson. Bor Borson's mate. Oh, yeah. Uh, Zadza said there's a sh Liberty ship just off the Isle of Shippy. I think there's quite a few around the, uh, the English coast, especially off uh, off Ireland. That's oh. where you generally find them off the coast, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, usually. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there, Chris. Oh, it's sharp tonight, isn't it? <laughs> Hello. Well, I thought I'd better keep moving this week because otherwise you'd get, complain that I sit still too much. No, <laughs> what happens is whenever Ted goes into full screen share mode, your little preview screen just stops. But every now and then it doesn't. But there was one there was one week when you were just sat there like this, but you you weren't actually stopped. You just didn't actually move for about five minutes. I was, I was reading my chat. I was going. I know you read. Do me I job. Like, I don't know if he's moving or if it's stuck or what. <laughs> uh, right, my phone started up again. Let's see if there's any more uh, questions. Yay. Uh, uh, we have a question from uh, Reese at RJC Models. Hey, Reese. Are you guys coming to Telford? Uh, uh, what, in November time November again. When the big thing is in Telford, it's not just an invite round for tea. Oh, okay. But uh, I was hoping it was an invite <laughs> round for tea, but there you go. <laughs> uh, everybody down around Reese's. Yeah, we hope to be. There was discussion on this at um, last weekend at the Yacht Club, uh, but uh, I don't think Pete was in any condition to remember what was spoke about. No. no. I'm, I'm still I'm still trying to heal the mental scars of Pete singing Agadu in exactly the way he sang it, which was kind of disturbing. Yeah, I've never heard I could do something like that before. Yeah, I, I, I never want to see it, a man's hips yeah. move like they that was just <laughs> and, and his, and his, uh, uh, his worship, the honorable Borson. Yeah, I didn't trust him one bit. Yeah, yes, but, yeah, uh, so, yeah, all right, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I wasn't able to make it this year. I'm hoping to go, I haven't booked hotels at all so if i do go it'll probably be on the sunday not the both not overnight i'm because, intending to go on the sunday again because yeah yeah working saturday and stuff so yeah i'm hoping to but again there's usually a lot of reasons that i can't do things like that so yeah uh, so yeah well we hopefully pete may uh the rest of the team will be making decisions soon mm. um to uh get us booked into telford or have us attend there by other means mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah we do hope to get down if we don't get down as an e-models group certainly will be down as individuals uh do more than more can i just go as an entire group i'd like to go as a group person myself <laughs> yeah, we, yeah protect like you. come protect down and pick me up yeah <laughs> well we'll have to watch each other's back won't we so, you know. yeah. <clears throat> hello i'm 12 different people <laughs> uh, adrian david says do you guys ever come down to kent uh, you, you mean across the kent is that an invite i don't know what's in kent uh, yeah. Adrian David sofa. I'm, I'll, I'll have the sofa. Yeah, I'll take the stereo and all the coffee he's got. <laughs> uh, uh, right, hey, it's getting on for eleven o'clock. Oh, oh we've got a giveaway and another giveaway to do yet. Right, yeah. Well, we've, got, right. we've got a giveaway, giveaway, and we've got right. a, uh, last week's winner. Yeah, we have. Should we announce that and then finish off with the stickers? We haven't done the giveaway yet. We've got a giveaway, giveaway, haven't we as well? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, that works. Last week, last well, we've, well, we've got... Yeah, that's right. Hang last on. Last week's giveaway. Yes. Yes, that's what I meant. I'll shut up. Right. I, will, I would have shown some pictures of last week's giveaway, but I've lost... I can't find them. <laughs> uh, but it was a, an American Corvette, was it? Something like that. An American car and a yes. weathering and a weathering book. 
Yes, it was the uh, it was an American muscle car of some sort type with the wheels and the yeah. charm. Yeah, after we said you could, after we said you could rust it all up, <coughs> you experts out there said you can't because it's fiberglass. Mm. But, but you can rust it all up anyway because it's your model. Yeah. Mm. Uh, right. Um, yeah. So we picked a winner out of the winning name picking thing, uh, and we found that we do have a winner this week. Yes. 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 Should we tell them? Yeah, let me know. Oh, we better, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, we better have, haven't we? Well, uh, this, is, right. this is for the, uh, what was the comment? I can't it was um, happy it, birthday. Yeah, it was happy birthday, Mrs. Pete May, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, something like that. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, there's quite a few. Uh, and this week, comment winner uh, was number 23, uh, picked at random by the random number picker, name picker thingy. And the winner is... <laughs> yeah, pause for effect. Is a Fester Six Seven Workshop. You're the winner this week. I think it's in as well. So where? Well done, Colin. Yeah. So that's uh, some some kind of American muscle car that we can't remember what it is, and the weathering rusty weathering rusting book. Yeah. We, we, yeah. So yeah, we, we, I'll, I'll I'll remember where it is. I'll just find them and I'll tell the lads yes. where it is. So yeah. So Fester, I'll show you in. Congratulations to you. Yes. Yep. Make sure well to send Ted an email. Ted at emodels.co.uk with your name, address, and all that nonsense. Uh, put yep. down what you've won again so the guys can remember what the hell you've won when they try and find it on the shelf. Yeah. And then we want to see that car built and we want to see it rusted, even if yes. it is fabulous. We want to see it like a junkyard rat. Even though some people said it's not a metal body and it doesn't rust, don't care. We want to see it rusted and yeah. pinged with holes. Yeah. Everything and, rusts if you leave it long enough. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the vinyl roof's all flumped down and there's a cat on the seat asleep or, a, I don't know, yeah. I'm making leave. it on a tree growing out through the engine block. So use all the techniques in that book. Try and get uh, a space marine in it somewhere for reasons. Yeah. All the reasons. Uh, yeah, you can get all the weathering powders and stuff from e-models, you know, where yeah. they are. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. So, that, that well done. Right. Um, and we'll have a... Uh, we have got a giveaway for next week as well. At the end of the show, um, I th should, I screen should I do that now? Yeah, should we do it now? Might as well. Let's do it now. I'll do another screen show then. Have we decided? Do we even decide that? I can't remember. Yeah, uh, I found one. Okay. I don't yeah. remember. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, while Ted's just finding that, um, I did see a comment a minute ago saying, uh, uh, not to get to political, from a Canadian perspective, why ISM and E-Models and others don't promote each other's channels. Um, ISM's not a shop. E-Models is a shop. Mm. They do some bits with each other, but one's not a shop and one is. Retailers yeah. don't tend to promote each other because that doesn't make any sense. Um, but ISM's not a retailer. Uh, E-Models, I think, do sponsor a forum on the ISM website, I think. I can't remember. I've not been on there in ages. I used to... I think I'm actually a member of ISM, but I've not been on there in a long time. I think they have a section in the ISM website. Yep. They do sponsor that. Uh, and they do provide stuff for giveaways for ISM. But one is a shop and one's... A, what would you call it? A group, a society. Uh, it's not a shop, basically. So they yeah. do, they do stuff each other. Yeah, uh, and just to keep it fair, that um, one reason we don't share groups and things on here is because we'd never have time to do anything else other than just uh, tell everybody about other groups that are available and yeah. places to go. So we just uh, tend to stick uh, with e-models. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you usually find that you know most retailers, at least over here, retailers don't tend to promote each other. Yeah, they do have a working relationship with other retailers. But yeah. um, here, yeah, you, know, you, you wouldn't find one supermarket advertising another supermarket, no. uh, but but they you know, they do have a sort of working I relationship. I mean, the, re the reality is that most retailers <coughs> in this kind of business know each other and probably do a lot of stuff with each other anyway. It's just publicly they don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. He says, uh, thank you, very fair and honest, and makes me smile and stay with you guys and them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's, no right. secrets to, there's no secrets to be had. No, yeah. uh, e-models do sell UMP products, and yeah, we have mentioned them, and we do mention them on these live streams. So yeah, there, there yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Let's go across and do another screen share, and we'll have a giveaway uh, for this week for everybody. So if you uh, haven't had a chance to get into the chat live, and if you're watching us on catch up, it's your chance that you can win a prize uh, from this week's show. Mm. Um, 
I'm staying in the theme that we had earlier. Uh, lock it on me. Uh, do a screen share. I'm getting good at this now. Yep. Don't forget, while Ted's pressing his buttons, we're hopefully pressing the right ones. Um, if you're if you're not watching, well, if you are watching this live now and you want to to enter this, um, wait about 15 minutes after the live stream is finished, and then go onto the YouTube page, and you'll see this episode as a video that you can comment on. That's why you need to put your comment. Oh, we're giving away. Oh, yeah, hello. Yeah, we're giving away this. It's this this very much on the theme of uh, what we've been talking about watching store tonight. Like a striker, but not a striker. Yeah, it's like a striker, striker, but not a striker. And if you wanted to, you could uh, bling it up to look like a space marines. Space marine. Space marines or anything space like marine. that. Space marine. Yeah. And if not, you could build it as the KTO Rosselback uh, Polish APC. Yeah, or you could just put a massive, massive bulldozer thing on the front and... <laughs> Put a space marine on top and paint it blue. And <laughs> no, they can't. No, they can't. They can build it as a nice uh, Polish APC. Yeah, if you want to. Are all the space marine <laughs> things blue? They always seem to be blue when I see them. Yeah, I know. That's the, the only thing I don't like about space marines is the blue. It's like really. That's why I might do my little thing is like uh, Astra Militarum because I can do it like various camouflage colors in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this but, looks mint though, and I like this. I yeah, like but this, this one is actually in the office page. And I remember about the office page. Um, the each week, e models will uh, put things in the office page. They may stay there for a day, they may stay there for a week, or they may sell out straight away as soon as they go on. So that's the says <laughs> best pup hair, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Robert Blalock says this begs for chrome spinners and a hot pink paint job. So if you win it, I expect to see pictures of that as well. Yeah, we want to see could, spinners. Yeah. We want to see bright pink. We want to see Hello Kitty stickers on yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Best ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's it. Do with it what you want, but we want to see it. We yeah. The terms and conditions of these giveaways is it can't go in a stash. You've got to build it. You got to build it and post pictures. Can I do yeah. the phrase for this week? Yeah, go on then. Okay, so like we said, you need to put a comment on the video, not this comment in this chat, uh, but on the video once it's gone 10 minutes, 15 minutes after the stream finishes. And I think all you need to type this week, and you can spell it however you want, and the most ridiculously spelled one is even better, spell it the worst as possible, is Space Marine. Mm. Yeah, you've got to Doesn't keep it. How you spell it. If you spell it wrong, that's brilliant. We want it to spell wrong. Yeah. Tony Tony Rex says they they paint you blue because they fight on blue planets. Yes. So he's camo. He's just not yeah. camo from around here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just type Space Marine. Any have a, spell it as sillily sillily as you want. That's not a real word, is it? Yeah. Sillily. Sillily. So, so uh, and we, we will pick one next week at random, and or we'll, we'll get the random comment picker to pick one, and that person will win that awesomeness. I'm I'm actually feeling. You know, when I was walking around the warehouse looking for a kit last week, and I wasn't feeling the love for anything, I was like, eh, uh, nothing was... But now we look at all these things, and I'm like, oh, that's really good, I want to make that. Why didn't I see that? I don't know, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I, I do like armour, but it kind of comes and goes, and a lot of times I'm like, eh. But then sometimes I'll just get bitten by the bug, and I'll be like, oh. Frankie goes to Hollywood, says Ted's still in focus. Wow. Yeah, Festa Six to Seven Workshop says thank you so much, Ted and Fox. It was okay. great. Yeah. Nobody yeah. forgets Chris. Says. Uh, yeah. Good work, <laughs> Ted and Fox. Yeah. We just assume that when somebody says Ted and Fox, he includes it as well. I think what it is, I think what it is, I'm just finding the position now to be in focus. Whether I <laughs> you've just got to move yourself a bit closer. Yeah. yeah. So we just all get really close to the camera and spook everybody out. <laughs> you just do uh, like uh, extreme uh, close up. The uh, 3D. The th Trout and Charles says Ted's broken his longest time in focus record. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what it is, what it is actually, you see, he's actually so far out of focus, so far out of focus that it's gone full 360 and back into focus again. That's how far out of focus. He's actually exceeded his focus yeah. because he's completely <clears throat> out of the, focus. The, the ring won't twist anymore. I on don't the camera, camera, on the about camera. that. Doctor Big Rick doesn't twist anymore. You're not supposed to be. <laughs> oh, Philly says I should change my name to And, and then I'll never be left there. Ted and Fox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they, uh, they haven't got my little person yet, and I'm not actually on the titles yet on the on the frame of the video. So it, it will happen at some point. They assure yeah. me. But the uh, irony is, we'll get your little cartoon, dude, and then we still won't be able to do captions because Google's made a fail. <laughs> uh, right. Um... Just right. in case Pete, mate, uh, and the governor wasn't watching at the start, 
Yes, we haven't got the banners because Google's rubbish and we, we can't get them up, if you pardon no. the expression. Yeah, so we, we, we've, got, fault. Yeah, we've got them. I've got a little sign up. Yeah. I've, got, I've got my name up. Doesn't I've seem got my name up. I'm not I'm allowed to have any name. I don't get mentioned. So. Fox from emails. Fox from emails. Fox emails. Fox emails. Fox. <laughs> yeah. Spider King. Show people my boobs. That's all right. I'll put them away now. Uh, Spider Q said we can get 3D scans of us. And yeah, we spoke about last week, didn't we? we, we yeah, we're going to get. You can get. We're going to see if we can get scans of the whole E models team, and we can be the crew in your. Oh, enough. There's a 3D scan of me. <laughs> hey. He, he does say, can E models make an out of focus TED kit? I don't know. That you make an out of focus kit. As an out of focus fox. Look at the belly on that. I've lost that since then. Look at the gut on that. Where that tells from the year before last. Uh, a bit of a gut going on when they scan me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we mentioned that to them before, haven't we, about getting little 3D scans? Yeah, yeah we could all be in sitting pauses or arms folded pauses like that, and if, you know, we could fit in tanks and something. Yeah, yeah. What, what, they, what they should do is like get like one or two poses of each of them. So, like one sitting, one standing, one relaxing on something like that, one sitting and one standing, and then offer them as like so you could up with these vehicles with like Pete, mate, and Ted and Chris in them and stuff. Uh, uh, right. Is there a stain on my t shirt? <clears throat> it's your dinner. No, I think it's his ear. <laughs> that's that's his ear, and the other that's one's his, his other ear as well. It's a fox. It's me. It's the, it's the fox character. Uh, there probably is a stain. There's probably like some null oil or something on there. There usually is. Agrax Earthshade or curry, probably more likely. Uh, uh, I'm sure Ravel could make an out of focus Ted. <laughs> yeah, but not deliberately. It'd be like 95% <laughs> seam lines. <laughs> Uh, right, it's ten past eleven. Time we give some stickers away and mugs and things. And okay. I've got, uh, I've got a question. Uh, oh, yes. well, should we do a sticker do first? A mug or a sticker or what have you? Uh, we'll do a sticker mug sticker. A stick mucker. Stick, stick mug mucker. Sticker. What? That's what? Like real words. Uh, sticker mug sticker. You, you have a, a public question to ask, have you? <clears throat> Is it a good one? Do we want to save that for the mug? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a question that's coming from Casper Smith. Remember, the question asker gets a sticker as well. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we get a mug, it gets a sticker. Yeah, Casper, yeah. If you're watching, send me your address or have you sent it? No, send me your address and you can send, I'll, we'll send you a sticker as well. Uh, I've, only got the, I've only got the model stickers left now, by the way. Uh, I think I'm out now. Yeah, I've still got the e model stickers. Uh, the ammo ones have run out. Um, uh, the last of those went out today. Uh, Michael Jackman says, what's the phrase to win the APC? The phrase is Space Marine. Space Marine. And that's space spell Marine. it however you like. <laughs> For those that are struggling, it's Space Marine. <laughs> but obviously spell it wrong. It's more funny that way. Uh, right. right. Shall we go with the, with the sticker question? Yes. What is the uh, sticker Kasper question? Smith. Um, it, you can either Google this if you know how to spell it, take a guess, or you might actually know the answer. Remember, don't answer till Ted says <coughs> again. But it's the first one <coughs> who will actually know the, the, the number. Uh, how many letters are in the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? <laughs> Go. How many, <coughs> how many letters are in the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Oh, I'll give up. I've got, I've got past you, the number. You know, right in the film, they say it backwards wrongly. Oh. They don't actually say it backwards. They say Docious Ali Espiistic Fragicali Rupus. Oh. Not actually backwards. See, I, I can't do any words backwards, but I can do everybody, 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 rye, body, why, body, 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 die, why. I can take a letter <laughs> off each time. I also oh, tried to count them. I hope you know the answer to this, Ted. Did you count them? Uh, I haven't counted them, but I've been, I've been re reliably informed of the answer. Um, uh, yeah, I, I tried to count the letters, but I got stuck after six because I don't know what comes after six, so... There's been, a, there's, Ooh, been a few, well there's been a few close <laughs> high five. Uh, there's been a few very close. Uh, also, we do trust the person asking the question that the answer is correct. We don't actually do our own research because we can't be bothered. It would have been <laughs> counting <laughs> and stuff. Cheese on toast. A mouse. Nine million. I don't Cheese think any of these are quite right. Murder. She wrote. Good call. Forty-two. Yep. Uh, I like the fact my mum gets a call out even in the common murder she read. <laughs> there we go. There was the answer. Matt Pabst. Uh, Matt Pabst. 
Uh, 34 was the 34. answer. Well, I'm, I'm reliably in told it's 34, but the, the, the two small on the screen, I can't, I'm not going to count them. Yeah. Uh, 34. So, Matt, yeah, well done. Send us your address to ted at emodels.co.uk. I will get you a sticker sent out. Uh, where Richard I get David says on the buses. Yeah, on the buses. Yeah. Billy says the little one from different strokes. What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I'll get you, Blakey. Yes. You know what? I saw a little bit of today. Rising damp. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. He was a genius. Oh, Miss Jones. Oh, Miss Jones. He was a genius, that actor. Incredible. Uh, uh, Leonard Rossiter. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Do we have another one, or is it just the one today? Uh, uh, I, I haven't got any more. Okay. No. Well, we'll, just do it. we'll keep it as a sticker. Or do you yeah. want to do a mug as well? I've we'll, got we'll do a mug. Mug. We'll do a mug as well. Um, and could it be that mug? Yeah, yeah, you can have this mug. <laughs> yeah, complete with moustache marks and <clears throat> yeah. There's a cutout. Hey, right, good, Miss Jones. <laughs> says that's uh, uh, Miss Jones. I, I have a quick question then. If you need a question for us, for Mike. Go on then. Go on then, question master. You have a question? Okay. Do you it's, know the answer to the question? It's going to be a. It, everyone will know the answer to the question. It's going to be quite a quick one. So, okay, be ready for reading the answers. Uh, but not until I go. Wait till he says no. Question, then go, and then go. Uh, what's the letter that Ted can't type on his phone? Go. Ooh. <clears throat> now, Ted, we know Ted won't win. No. <laughs> it's, 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 I can't send the answer. Biddy Crate says, a good tongue twister <clears throat> is how many bears would a Bear Grylls grill if a Bear Grylls could grill bears? Phil hmm. East. Phil East is uh, Phil East. Q. Q, 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 Z, Q. So Phil East, my favourite. Yeah. Phil East sent an email. You know the drill. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've wrote it on my sheet. Phil East mug. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Do you always insult people on your little note list? Is that your little black book of insults? Yes. What have you written down about me? <laughs> you don't oh, want to read that out. Yeah, yeah. I wrote have you written Spanish names again. That you can't pronounce. He's in that pocket book that nobody should ever read. Uh, <laughs> uh, well done well done Phil yep. yep so that's it for this week uh, we've given things away we've talked about we've laughed we've cried we've been animals uh, we've had fun um, uh, at least says he's been caught worse we've tried to answer yeah. some questions uh, oh Michael Jackman says supercalifragilisticexpialidocious yeah. oh we spelt it a bit wrong there <laughs> yeah you missed the E out he's put an O in it where there's an I <laughs> Ted and Fox need couples therapy. Ew. Ooh. That's what I'm here for, to keep the peace. Yeah. He <laughs> should be in the middle. He's actually, in, well, on my screen, you're in the middle. So Am I? if I hit, if you try to hit Ted, <laughs> I just get the side of your head. Thanks. <laughs> Ow. You yeah, bop on the arm. one of them bop. things where you punch out there and a fist comes in. That's bop. Like, yeah. Arm bop. It's not working. You're not I don't know which side you're on, so I can't. Uh, <laughs> all right. Right. <laughs> time to go. Uh, I've had yes. a message. Yeah, I've had a message to bring the cat in. Uh, That's the chicken. Yeah, oh, the chicken's still around, actually. Uh, now, we have an important question here before we go. Is model making chicken making the move to a new house? Or oh, the model making chicken will come with us. Yes. Yes. A sandwich. Yeah. 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 Ew, to Chris, you can't. <laughs> no, not that kind of chicken. Uh, Right. Oh, sorry. We've got one last question before we go. Uh, Jamie Bourne, hi, Ted and Fox. I'm inquiring about which paint colour is the same as Humbrol 237 Desert Tan? Um, and what's the easiest to paint Army Woodland camouflage on a 1848 figure? Uh, I, I don't recall a message in chat earlier that said something about uh, the Airfix magazine this month has a new paint. I, I did see that as well, yeah. No. So that, that would yeah. tell you the answer. Yeah, have a go down. To, I know that the old Airfix uh, charts, I can't find it, used to have a conversion table on the back of them. So yeah. if you go down to your humble stockist and ask them for a paint chart, they'll probably give you one. Yeah. Failing that, there are a few apps on um, the phones and on, online and things like that that will yeah. paint conversions for you. There are, there's quite a few. If you do a little Google search, there's like a there's a whole load of different people. There's, there's one guy who put together this massive spreadsheet of like all the paint brands in the world um, and all the different colours. It's not like an official thing. It's just a thing he did in Excel. So I, I don't have 
I can't remember what it's called. You'll, yeah. you'll, if you do a Google search, you'll find it. Yeah, it'll be on there anyway. As for the paints for British Army Woodland Camouflage, I'll have a look in the eModels um, paint sets. We discussed them. I don't know if you were around. That uh, Was it last week or the week before? We discussed paint sets for painting all sorts of figures and everything like that. Um, have a look on any models. Uh, they'll probably find uh, the suitable uniform colour uh, that you're looking for. And it'll come in a set, uh, a bit all the colours you want. Dave uh, Barker says there is sustenance at the bench. Uh, right. Michael Drackman says he's looking at it now. 237, no equivalent at all on the new chart. <laughs> So oh, right. don't, don't use the new chart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure you'll find something online. It'll be a paint conversion for you. Uh, uh, Vincent, right. Mr. Loth says, answer camo on uniforms. Get the water slide with a camo pattern printed on them. Hmm. Well, there yeah. we go. Then. Uh, I didn't know there was that such a thing. Hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, right. My phone has died again. Wow, you need a new charging cable. <laughs> Or yeah. don't plug it in the PC, or uh, learn I how to charge it, your phone. I just, or actually I turn it, it on when you plug it in. Yeah. I think it's using the power. I think the power is being used faster. What is your phone? Is it an iPhone? An iPhone. What iPhone is it? Uh, a white one. A five, I think. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I I, I inherit my uh, telephones from the children. Ah. Um, that's how I get mine. Right. I'm gonna. Go, we're gonna go. It's time for us to go because it's 20 past 11. It's past oh. our bedtime. I know. Uh, yeah. Past your gin time. Yeah. Uh, the gin is probably frozen by now. The sun's over there and the yard arm's over there. It's, it's gone wrong now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the sun is well and truly over the yard arm. Well, the sun will be over the yard arm somewhere in the world. At every point in time. Uh, yeah. Uh, and if so you drive across the Arctic, you can drink gin because you're technically not drinking and driving. You're sailing and driving, so it's allowed. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, so good. It's anyway, I've got a tin of pear halves and a can of carnation downstairs with my name on it. Oh, no. Trout and Silent Child says, Night all, great show, Chris. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the other two were there as well. Yeah, so. yeah. It's all right, yeah, it's all right, Chris. Don't mind us, yeah, you you had a great show, yeah. yeah. Chris Chris runs everything, we just, we just sit here and I didn't yeah. even press any buttons, it's fine. I know. He's so good, he doesn't even need to, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking of that. We have put the extra seven minutes on at the end. Yep. So yeah. So they, they haven't yeah. lost out on anything. So we don't have. Yeah. We'll take all that popcorn, that complimentary popcorn back, because they've had the full, the full term now. Right. Time to go. Time for us to go and have a lie down in a dark room. And, yes. Yes. Is that your? Is that your terminology for gin? Gin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With ice. Uh, yes. Uh, so so until next week. Don't forget about the giveaway uh, for the APC. Yep. Um, Space Marines. Space Marines. So we'll talk to you all next week. Same time, same place. And all the same people again. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.